Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Can everybody hear me? Can everyone hear me? Is everybody alive? Hello? Hola? How's everybody doing? All right, we are live. Sorry, y'all. I was trying to pair my freaking headphones to my computer, but for whatever reasons, it's not pairing, so I can't wear them. But that's okay. I am back. I have returned. Hello, Snail Whale. Hello, Ahmad. Hello, Sandman. Hello, Star. Hello, Rinis. Hello, Fiernan. Hello, Mirit. Hello, Vega. Hello, Camilla. Hello, Gen Z Dreams. Hello, Hermes. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing on this Saturday morning or evening? Whatever it is for y'all. Are y'all ready to? Oh, my gosh. Are you ready to talk about lore? Because oh <laughs> y'all have no idea what what Hoyoverse is doing right now. Like it's it's insane what they're doing with Arlequino and everything that's coming out right now. It is crazy. Hello, Alex. What's up? Hello, Marsville. What's up? Good, and you? How have you been? I hope you're doing better. I'm doing a little bit better. You know, I'm I'm working through it. Oh, <laughs> because I didn't fucking post it to YouTube and only Twitter. Back in December, for those of you that don't know, I posted this long Twitter thread about where I was and like my mental health and everything and how it wasn't the greatest, which is why I haven't been around. Um, we can take a look at it. We can talk about it today. But yeah, that's why I haven't been present. But... I did also preview all of the sun and moon episodes that I have in the queue. So if you want to read that thread, it's very interesting. I'll probably link it in the chat if you want to read it. But what do I think about the new lore? <laughs> I think many thoughts about the, the new lore. Where do y'all want to start? What do you want me to talk about first? Because holy crap, 4.6 is like a really really stacked patch like super duper stacked also why are why are sing cho and Linny almost dead let's go heal them why are they almost dead i've like barely logged into genshin as well so i've missed out on so many primo gems y'all it's not even funny it's very depressing parent harry y'all want to talk about parent harry okay what about parent harry do you want to talk about because it has very interesting implications, especially the Crimson Moon Dynasty thing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but um, I had this theory about Conry and Celestia working together. Um, <laughs> and and I, I really do believe that even more now. Like that theory just... I think it become it became a lot more plausible with the pair and Harry book, especially with this patch coming up. Cause now I'm like, I'm really convinced that Conria was looking for descenders for Celestia specifically. I'm actually super convinced of that. But it's also really interesting because there are, interest, there are implications about the curse of the wilderness and then the curse of immortality. And also that it's 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 existed for a while, right? Like long before the Cataclysm, because we have no idea like when Pear and Harry, like when that legend actually popped up in Conria, but it talks about the curse. And I find that to be very interesting. Because if the curse really is like based on um, you betraying your god and Conrians didn't originally have a god, supposedly. I don't know if you couple that with what happened in Fontaine where they had, you know, long standing sin based on what Egeria did by making Oceanids into humans and then basically 
all Fontanians, i.e. their entire bloodline, was cursed. And Fontaine was destined to drown. It makes Conria's situation look a lot, look really interesting. You are not late, Dudu Malik. Malik, we just started. Don't worry about that. If Conria works with Celestia, then who's on the other side of the conflict? Us, the Abyss. Well, okay, so here's the thing. That doesn't mean that they're working together right now. I think in the past, however, Conria definitely was working with Celestia. And if not everyone was privy to this information in Conria, I think at the very least King Ermin was. I think one of the, I think either him or a group in Conria were working specifically for probably the sustainer, which is why at the beginning of the game, when the sustainer's like, the irrigation of mankind ends now, I wonder if it's because Conria decided to go their own way and do something specifically with Descenders that they weren't supposed to do. Hair Ware had the curse since childhood, which I think defeats the Hilly Churl theory. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what's going on with her curse and like what it actually is. Like, I thought all the glitching stuff that's going on with Arlequino and everything is just like because of forbidden knowledge because she's afflicted with some kind of forbidden knowledge. And forbidden knowledge itself is kind of like an error code if you think about it. It's like a glitch in the system. So that's why I thought she was glitching, but who knows? Did you see her weapon description posted? A ritualistic object that used to bridge two worlds, that's what? Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing about Pear and Harry because they had kids go through like this chimney thing and then like emerge out of something. And then they asked, are you dead? Which is very reminiscent of a few things. Like the Kari Bear Archon quest, when Kari Bear asks, am I dead? And his dad was like, no, we're in a fairy tale world now. Just very interesting. Did I do the Pusui quest? What's that? What Pusui quest? Perware pronounced in Chinese sounds like Perwery. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely like a callback to Pear and Harry. But I also think it's a callback to Pear the Penguin for reasons I am not going to talk about right now, except guys, Conrians are penguins. That's all I'm going to say. That is all I'm going to say. And you will see it in my upcoming video because I am trying to get this video done before 4.7 drops. Because... I don't know if you realize, but every single thing in 4.6 is a reference to King Ermin, and that includes Arlequino. Like, all of this, all of it is pre is preparing us for 4.7 or 4.8, whatever it is, whatever Conrea lore is coming, it's preparing us for Ermin. Because Arlequino is a reference to Ermin. Remus is going to be a reference to Ermin. Baiju in some way is a reference to Ermin, I guarantee you, because of his relationship with um, the Herb Lord, which is very reminiscent and a possible way that Ermin and Nibelung could have entered in a, into a symbiotic relationship. Don't ask me questions, okay? Just let me ramble. The banners, which is why I mentioned Baiju, because he's coming out with a banner. And they're also mentioning the Wanderer, which made me think about when... Um, I think Ashikai was the one who told me about theories about the Wanderer being related to King Ermin, like from a paral parallelistic way, which is really interesting <laughs> because I agree with it after I thought about it. And there was a lot of things that lined up with the research that I've done for the video that I'm doing right now, including this old English poem that I literally am going to be referencing in the video about King Ermin called The Wanderer, which is interesting. Plus, Odin himself, which Ermin's name is Odin. Ermin is one of the names for Odin, I mean. Odin himself was a traveler and wanderer, so that actually lines up as well. In the web event, Arlequino was so Phantom of the Opera as well. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. That's true. 
That's totally true. And Wanderer isn't father trailer stuff. Speaking of father, that's also why I kind of think, partially why, I believe Arlequino is supposed to be a reference to King Ermin because of all the father things going on, Odin is referred to as the All-Father. We know that Conria had an orphanage dedicated to finding, well, and housing descenders. Not finding, I would, I would argue the Universitas Magistrorum probably was tasked with finding descenders and then they sent whatever kids came in to whatever the orphanage was mentioned in Pear and Harry. But yeah, she has like a lot of parallels to Conria in general. And then of course the sustainer of heavenly principles because of all the moon shit. Why are we just running around Fontaine? Oh, it's because there's literally nothing to fucking do right now. Like this, look at this. What is this? What are we supposed to do with this? Penguins, yes, they're all penguins. They're all fucking penguins. They're all penguins from outer space. All Conrians. Because remember, I, I had a theory about Conrians being aliens and Pear the Penguin was always a part of that theory. Or was going, well, it was added on later on. After Fontaine came out because <laughs> I've been sitting on this theory for like a year. Because my center video came out like almost a year ago at this point. What does my quest log look like? Oh, I don't think I've done Chiori's quest actually. Yeah, I never did her quest, but I don't know if I'm interested in doing this right now. Is it good? Was her quest good? Let me know. Is it worth going through right now? I haven't logged in since the end of the potion event. I feel that. Like I've intermittently logged in since then and I missed a couple of events actually. So I missed out on some primos, but we still gonna get Arlequino because I still have, how many do I have? I have that much. <laughs> oh God. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull for her weapon, but we'll see. Fun fact, I found Arlequino's blood infusion in her kit called Mask of the Red Death, which is a Poe short story. Arlequino uses scythe, death, image, death imagery on extreme. Yeah, she has like Grim Reaper vibes, which is interesting. It is interesting what harbingers they sh chose to show in the animatic. I can't help but latch on to that. Um, yeah. So they showed who? Cap Capitano, La Senora, and then Scaramouche, right? But a lot of people are hung up on the Scaramouche aspect of it, but I'm kind of like, I don't know if that was just supposed to be like a representation of what happened for us, the viewers, versus like Arlequino recounting her own memory. I, I don't know. For now, I'm taking it as the former, and I'm not taking Scaramouche's presence too literally there. But it is interesting that they chose to show those three specifically. I do agree that there's probably a reason for that, but who knows? Still don't understand why Ermin is named after Erminsel. It's cause it's, <laughs> okay. It's, I, I actually think he might be the gardener mentioned in the parable of the tree like he might actually be the gardener originally i thought it might have been well then again i've i thought that venti and ermin actually have a lot in common but it might actually be king ermin that's the gardener mentioned in the parable of the tree the one that planted the tree with with isteroth's help i'm really excited for Wait, hold on. Where am I? Oh my gosh, I just lost my place. I just lost my place in the comment. I just lost the comment. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, it's not worth doing now. It's a good standalone quest. Okay, it's not long. It's okay. Like, it's a nice quest to know her. All right. All right, well, you know what we can do? We can just go through. We can watch the animated shorts. Yeah, we can do that. And um, 
what else? There's one of the, oh, and the teaser for Arlequino. We can do that too. Just give me a second. Hello, Eclipsa, how you doing? It's for the audience, I think. Yeah, I thought it was for the audience. Yeah, I thought it was just Hoyo's perspective, but we'll see. We'll see if it has any, um, any other relevance. Honestly, I think we shouldn't overthink. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not spending, I'm not losing sleep over it. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> but if it does become relevant, then it becomes relevant, I guess. Any thoughts on why we're going to fight Arlequino? Oh, I have. Okay. So there's that one girl in, in the thingy in, in the, it's not the trailer, but it's part of the web event. I think that picture of Arlequino and then Fremine, Lenny, Lynette. And then there's that pink haired girl who has like a lot of weird interesting similar similarities to clervy from the animated short so now i'm wondering i'm wondering what this little girl is because i've seen a lot of people say oh well she's like princess marcotte and i'm like yeah i agree but i'm just kind of like wondering what the hell she actually physically is and fremine seems well we don't know for sure but it seems like he's hiding her from arlequino so I guess that would be why they're going to be fighting. And also where they're fighting is where Arlequino fought the previous knave. So that's interesting. Lots of parallels there. Because we do know also that Arlequino wants Linny to become the next king, which I think is interesting because I think Linny and Lynette are very interesting because they are very representative of the sun and moon. Linny, in in terms of being a magician, Linny's always on stage. He's always center. He's always center stage. He's the star of the show. He's like the bright sun. Lynette is more like a moon, more of an assistant type role, but also their roles are kind of interchangeable. Especially if you think about their past in the House of the Hearth, because Lynette technically got her vision first and was arguably of more use to the House of the Hearth. And that made Linny kind of jealous and feel useless. But I also think she's the moon because guess look at what look what what's her fucking her fucking element. Her fucking element is Animo. You think they chose that? by accident who else is potentially an animal well who else is potentially related to the moon and is also called the thousand winds of time it, it's fucking it's fucking it's rough. also lynette is a cat did you see what they recently did with cats and how paimon likes cats and how cats like paimon and paimon is related to the moon Something and Venti is also allergic Let's to cats. Two heads are better than one. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and also how we have a fucking talking cat apparently in Remuria. And by the way, as a side note, I guarantee you that little cat has something to do with Fortuna. You know, the thing that's like a ship and a concept and like a whole bunch of other shit. But I also think it's the moon part of Remuria. Also, on the cat thing being related to the moon, there is the Egyptian goddess Bastet, who was the protector of her father, Ra. She was also associated with the moon, and the Greeks equated her to Artemis, who is one of the goddesses of the moon in Greek mythology. Also, Bastet is, like I said, she protected her father, and she is thus a goddess of protection, like Paimon. <laughs> cats are the moon. Anyway, that was my rant about cats, because I really, I, I guess I really wanted to get that out. What's Fortuna? Fortuna is something that's related to Remus and Remuria. It's like, it's confusing to kind of explain because it's multiple things. It is literally multiple things. It's like a ship. 
that Remus wrote on. It's a concept. It's it's a lot of things. Fortuna. <laughs> also, it is a goddess. Like it is an actual goddess. A guy a goddess that's also involved with another god named Kairos. Kairos. <laughs> Remember her? Well, Genshin's version of Kairos is a little bit different, but is related nonetheless. Hi, D Money Got Game. What's up? Wasn't there also a running meme about tunas in Honkai and Hoyo likes making silly jokes like this lore relevant? Oh, yeah. Isn't it like. Isn't it like. <laughs> Don't we have like weapons based on fucking fish in this game? Like a bow, I'm pretty sure, and a couple other weapons. Speaking of fish, cats like to eat fish, right? What's the name of one of the most important characters in this game that has not been really discussed? What they say is true. Fishel, which means you little fish. The world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. Interesting, huh? Kitty cats are important. And we fished out Paimon, yes. And also, Paimon's demon name, like the demon Paimon has control over fish. So more, cats are the moon. Cats are the moon, I promise you. Well, them and wolves and foxes, because there's, if you notice, there's like weird, there are like animals weirdly associated with the moon. It's like wolves, cats, and foxes. And I'm trying to figure out the fox part right now, because if you really think about it, Hoyoverse likes to pair foxes with moon aligned characters. They did it in Star Rail. They kind of did it in Honkai Impact 3rd, and they're doing it in this game with A and Yai and Miko. And also, um, what is it called? That Moonlit Bamboo Forest book where the boy stumbles upon like a fox wedding or something, and then he meets that horse spirit who was probably a horse for the Moon Sisters that pulled their carriage. Moon shit. The luxurious sea lord Acclaimor. Oh yes, thank you. That's what it is. Cats are the moon. Also, another remember, remember, there's one other important character who was represented as a cat in a in an allegory. It was Scaramouche. He was represented as a fucking cat. As a little kitty. Oh yeah, and Sino. That's the other part that was like, oh, this is like King Ermin stuff because we're going to get Deshret lore and Hermanubis lore. And Sino in general is also going to be Ermin lore because he's a wolf. And I'm not explaining why wolves have everything to do with Conria, but I promise you they do. They really fucking do. Like Andreas and all of them, they are very important. Oh, thank you for the donation, D Money Got Game. Thank you, thank you. We sound like that one villain out of that movie. Wait, what one villain out of what movie? That is so. <laughs> that is so vague. In her trailer, also, a giant moon is behind her when she runs. Is it not? Wait, in whose trailer? It A's? Yes? Yes. She could be an aberration created by the ley lines or something that has to do with Fremenet's way of imagination, if anyone remembers the Fremenet. Yeah, yeah, I think that would make sense. Because he's all about, like, fantasies, right? So that girl... That girl probably has something to do with that. I would I would be down with that. That would also kind of be like Rue from Tsurumi Island's situation. Even though it wasn't, like, explicitly um, explained... He was likely a product of a wish made by the Thunderbird, one that the Ley Lines probably granted, which is why he was able to basically come back to life, but only 
He was only able to sustain himself on Surumi Island unless we brought a piece of the Thunderbird's power with us, which we did to Seirai Island, if you guys remember that quest. But I kind of think it's possible, right? Like this Marcotte girl, I'll call her, being a product of the Ley Lines, I think it's, I think it's entirely possible. And having something to do with Clervy, because she has like really similar design stuff to her. I wonder if that's a misdirection from the trailer. Arla wouldn't want to put that burden on her children after she went through that herself, me thinks. Yeah, so one of um obviously one of the things about Arlequino that's been floating around because of her inspirations from the Commedia del Arte and also just the voice lines from Child and Scaramushin game. It feels like it feels like Arlequino is definitely going to betray the Fatui at some point or like go rogue. And after that animated short, yeah, she she kind of like the Fatui are the reason Clervy died. So like and like she's kind of just there because she was being charged with murder. So like she's not entirely here by choice. She has like no loyalties. That's all I'm going to say. Or like barely any. I I, I still think she's going to her her lore is going to cross over with Columbina somehow. Like it has to. But also, Clervy and Columbina are very similar to each other because I think they're referencing the same person, aka the first fucking Seelie. The first fucking Seelie. Oh my gosh, we need to talk about the animated short and all of the symbolism and everything that it's saying. Because it's crazy. It's, it's insane. Everything with the mother, the daughter shit. All I'm going to say is you can expect that from Celestia. What do you think the sustainer of heavenly principles is? This is all representative of shit and ermine and everything oh my gosh my mind is going everywhere at once you have no idea rue was a ley line apparition just like the rest of the ghostly figures similar to enkonomiya yeah yeah like but he had like a physical form which was which was interesting and he was also different from literally everyone else on Surumi Island because he could actually interact with the world. So it was like he was, it was like he was alive while everybody else was kind of like a recording that was just playing over and over again. But he was like physically here until he wasn't rip. Have I seen the order of the Fatui constellation wheel? Is there an order to it? Like, have people made, like, an order that correlates or something? I haven't seen that. Show me if that is the case. But I just thought they were in random positions. I don't know. I didn't really think too much about it. Clervy and Columbina also had the same bow bandage on their hand. Oh, that's interesting. How did people fucking notice that? Because Columbina's, like... Pale. She's really pale. I wouldn't have noticed that. Okay, interesting. And Rue could even leave the island. Yep, but with the Thunderbird's help. Black Pink. What about Black Pink? The things we fight for the Leyline money and EXP books are also physical. This is true. This is true. Yeah, so it does really make me wonder if that girl is like part of like what somebody else said, basically part of Fremenet's somewhat imagination, but clearly not because it's clear that she has something to do with Clervy, whether it's just symbolic or she actually has a tie to Clervy. We've been fighting the Harbingers in order from child to now Arlequino, and after Arle Arlequino is Columbina. Oh, interesting. Wait, so then, okay, hold on. Let me look. Let me look at the Fatui constellation wheel. Because if that's true, isn't, 
isn't um capitano oh yeah capitano is after colombina that would make sense that's interesting we did go child senora scaramouche arlecchino possibly colombina and then capitano and we know capitano is in notlon and we're we're literally about to go to notlon that is insane that fontaine is like almost over like it should be we're at 4.6 that's crazy oh yeah if and that's assuming also if capitano's constellation are the three nails which may be holy nails which is insane if they are because there's a lot there if they are when the fuck are we gonna fight Dottore? see i was he's you know what he seems a lot like he's gonna be like the final quote unquote fatui that we fight possibly before piero he just seems like he's i don't know <laughs> i don't know they're like building him up to be something greater also i do think his lore will crossover with Columbina because I kind of feel like he had something to do with Columbina's creation but that's a prac theory that I had like two years ago <laughs> why fight Dottore because he's evil he's like he's like the big bad I feel like he's caused so much strife also I I would be surprised if we didn't see him in Notlon because technically his lore kind of does cross over with Notlon in a very very kind of off kilter way and by that I mean when he slayed Ursa the Drake in Mondstadt which was a dragon that only came to Mondstadt because of Vanessa and Vanessa's from Notlon I still know I want to learn more about that by the way because we were told that they that Notlon has entered a symbiotic relationship with dragons. But like Ursa the Drake was trying to kill Vanessa's clan. For whatever reason, and we still have no idea why. He he was just like chasing them, and he's not stupid, so he was doing it for a reason. He said he'll make more copies. Well, I don't know if he said that, but like he has, he definitely has other options. He did also say that it takes time to make segments. So I, I don't know what he's got cooked up his sleeve, but he's definitely got something. He wasn't too, he wasn't too bummed out by Nahida being like, get rid of your clones, bitch. Dottori probably when we get back in Sumeru, there's still that region with the gates to Conria. Oh yeah, when is that gonna happen, BT dubs? Because we are technically going to a Conria-esque nation right now, which is Remuria. Which I hope everybody will be paying attention because there are gonna be a lot of Conria parallels there. But yeah, when are we actually physically gonna go to Conria? Who knows? Could be between Notlon and Snezhnaya, could be after Snezhnaya. Could be in the middle of Notlon. Could be next patch. Could be... I don't fucking know. But I hope it's soon. Oh, I wanted to ask this also, by the way, because this determines whether or not I, I eliminate an entire section of my video. And I believe I asked this a long time ago when I first talked about doing this theory. So, Conria has a lot of Germanic inspirations. Emphasis on Germanic, which doesn't necessarily mean Germany, but means the Germanic peoples of Europe, which covers way more than Germany. But it also is based on Germany, especially the Romantic period in Germany, because we have like a ton of philosophers, playwrights, etc. referenced in the game that are from Romantics, the Romantic era, like Richard Wagner, Frederick Nietzsche, the, 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 um, the, what are they called? The other, the brothers that wrote all the fucking fairy tales down. 
Why is their name escaping me right now? Oh my God, they are so famous. What is their name? I am blanking on their name right now. Someone tell me what their names are. The brothers. The Grimm brothers. Thank you, Jacob Grimm and then the other one. Yeah. Yeah, they're from that period too and they... In fact, romanticism is what revived the interest in fairy tales in the first place, which is why they compiled it. And it was also fueled by nationalism and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I, okay, anyway, I was wondering if people would be upset if I talked about the Germanic inspirations because, well, not the, specifically the German inspirations, because I feel like it dips a little bit into Nazi Germany, especially because they already introduced something related to theosophy in the game which is like racial theory on your mind again? Let's work through it together. with the whole Who root cycle mind? shit <laughs> so i was wondering if people would be not so happy if i decided to talk about that especially with this orphanage stuff because i i, I kind of feel like it might be somewhat based on well i won't say that okay but anyway, would people be upset? Because cause there's like a lot of nods to it in the game, I feel like, with all the imagery and then some of the things that have been said in game. The occult stuff, and I say the occult stuff might be related because there were a lot of high profile Nazi officers that were occultists and in secret societies. Why need to be upset if it's just a theory? Well, you know, y'all know how people can get sometimes. And I don't really want to offend anyone. Hmm, it's hard to say. Pro yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Danesliff needs to come next patch or I will sue that way. Yeah, no, he, where the fuck is he? It's, we're at the end of Fontaine. He better fucking show up. I will be pissed. No, I, I, I think he will because they are dropping so many Conria things right now. And again, I, you'll see in the video, but Arlequino definitely is like an ermine reference, I feel. Um... The banners, Sino, all of it is related or adjacent to Conria-esque things. So I think we're going to get it like either in the next patch or the patch after. It would be insane if we didn't. I, I'd actually be very pissed if we didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do it. I don't know, bro. It's for me, it's equal to talk about Russian ideology nowadays it's difficult for real yeah that's the other thing as well snezhnaya is going to be very interesting depending on what time periods they're gonna be taking from and i kind of already think they're definitely gonna be taking from some interesting time periods but i do wonder what will happen when that when we cross that bridge but I mean, the Germans, the German stuff for the video, I think it's interesting, but it's definitely not necessary to the theory that I'm making. I have other ways to prove what I'm saying, but it is, I do think it is relevant and it's interesting, but it may just have to be tabled. I don't know. I imagine how community will blow up in Snezhnaya. Yeah, I'm I'm like I'm like wondering how they're gonna do the Russian stuff for Snezhnaya. That's been in the back of my mind. But we'll see.
I mean, it's still fictional in the end. Yes, but like it's heavily inspired by the real world, which is why, you know, people and I think rightfully so got upset with some of the things that Sumeru was doing. So, you know, it even though it's still fictional, it is based on reality to some extent. So you just have to treat these conversations carefully. Gringos will cry about just about anything. Don't mind people from the USA. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give it some thought and I, I think I'll reach out to some, to some content creator people and be like, hey, should I do this? I feel like the answer is gonna be no. It's probably based on Imperial Russia. Yeah, probably. I personally don't mind but a lot of people lack critical thinking, media literacy. So for your mental health, cut that out. Yeah, I feel like even if I put a, a disclaimer, Vega, I feel like people will still will still take any chance to take what I say out of context because this is the Internet. But we'll I don't know. I'll think about it. So I only have like a few weeks to think about it because I'm trying to get this video out before 4.7 comes out. In the end, you choose to do it or not. I will. I, I will think about it. I know at the very least I could. I know I can definitely talk about like the Germanic inspirations. Not the German ones, maybe, but we'll see. Okay. Talking about history should not make anyone upset, but we live in a world. We live in a society, my friend. And I mean, I, I can understand some people getting upset depending on how, you know, issues are discussed slash handled. So I just want to make sure I'm being careful and respectful, but it is what it is. Hot take. I don't think we will fight him in the next year. We won't fight the Tory. I want to fight him. I want to punch him in the face or hug him. I want him to be a playable character. Actually give us, give him, give him us as a playable character, please. Don't just make him an enemy. You have to make him a playable character. Give us one of his segments. Honestly, I'm kind of worried about how they'll do not lawn. Uh, that's another thing people are worried about <laughs> since it's supposed to be partly based on pre-colonization America. It's also based partially on Africa, too. So uh, we'll see what's going on with that. Yeah, like. We, we, we will see. We will. We will see how they do all of that. If you're scared to discuss something, then nothing will be done. People have different opinions as always. That is true. Maybe I'll just bite the bullet and be like, you know what? I'll, I'll do it and I'll try to be as respectful as I can. We've just been running around the city. We haven't been doing anything, have we? Oh, we're supposed to be watching the freaking anime. <laughs> Hold on, let me get that set up. Give me one second. All right. Actually, first, let me mute the game volume. Oh, goodness. What have I done? My computer's doing something weird. Six tribes in Notlon that we know from the BP weapon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, well, well. Look who came back. Well, well, well. You're back, this Wagyu. Welcome back. I have arrived. Hello, sci-fi game. I see you're talking about father. Yes, we were actually about to just pull up the anime because there are a lot of interesting parallels in it from like the first second of it to the very end. Oh, goodness. What is going on?
my computer has chosen to wig out on me and I have no idea why. Like, I cannot click anything in my taskbar, you guys. Oh, no. What is going on? Uh, how do I do this, y'all? Uh. Yes, we are going to have watch time of anime. If I can get my computer to work. Maybe you can shelve it for now, put a pin on it, and when we get closer to Connery, you can revisit the topic. Yeah, maybe I can do that. I will think about it. I will think about it. Why aren't you letting me click you? Oh no, it's the blue ring of death. That says it's like loading or something. Not really sure what to do here. Okay, well, maybe I can use my task manager. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Nope, that did not work. Kill it in task manager and run again. If you're not sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? Oh, there we go. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, it's working now. It's working now. Alright, let me mute this and go to the animu stuff. The screen will go black for a moment. Do not be alarmed. Oop, that's not it. This is it. Can everybody see the screen? The YouTube screen. Oh, Nahida wanted to help. Why is she so cute? She is adorable. Maybe Fischl is the 10th Harbinger. Oh, God. <laughs> Secretly. If Notlon has a Philippine reference, I'm happy about it. I mean, it would make sense because Philippine history it crosses over with Spain, doesn't it? And I'm pretty sure we'll probably see some Spanish references in not long even though it's like mostly pre-colonized america okay yes you can see the screen perfect all right let's let's begin because we're gonna be pausing very soon <laughs> you were born into this world all alone all right so <laughs> From the get-go, what does this remind people of? First of all, these things are like sprouting in what looks a lot like abyssal stuff slash primordial sea stuff, which makes sense, right? Because the primordial sea birthed almost all life onto that, right? But I, again, I'd argue it's probably the abyss as well, because, well, the primordial sea kind of low-key looks like the abyss and all the starry shit that we see all the time. Um, this is very reminiscent of what the sinner tells us. Like, you're like a flower born in sin, pure let, yet spotless. In reference to the traveler. And where did the traveler come from? Where did the primordial one come from? They likely got to Tavat from the abyss. They, they likely got to Tavat from the abyss. Primordial fire, look from the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like a spark of life. Fire, you're right. That is kind of like primordial fire. And then uh, they make flowers and they sprout out of the ground. Shade of life seeds of maybe flower type connections, descenders, outlanders, which is interesting because again, the house of the hearth is low key a parallel to whatever the orphanage is called in Conria, right? And that orphanage was looking for housing descenders. 
that was its primary purpose. So this connection, this parallel is not by accident. You should review it. Then when it's finished, play it back. Sure. We can do that. Wasn't that, wasn't the hat in the Sumerian chef battle event looking a lot like a conquistador's hat? So some Portuguese, Spanish Portuguese element might be there. I'm sorry. I am blanking. What battle event? I do not remember this. Oh my goodness. From death spawning life. Hmm. It also, you know what this makes me think of? Do you guys remember Aeneas? Or not, not Aeneas, Elinus. The dragon, one of Ryan Daughter's babies. When he was talking about, if you guys played that world quest, when he was talking about when he was born, he was saying it was like in a cold and dark place. Which is interesting because it makes it seem like his consciousness existed prior to Ryan Daughter creating him, which is interesting. In the special program. Oh, I'm, we're going to have to look at that because I do not remember that. Actually, let's look for that now because I have it pulled up here. There's a Sumeru. There, where is it? Oh, wait, is that it? Expected risks that can be the most nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. A rather strange. No, that's not it. That can't be it, is it? Or is that it? Oh yeah, that probably is because we're trying to cook up like weird shit, like Reg's vine stuff. Interesting. Yeah, I can see that. It kind of looks like, um, you know, like what archers wear. It, it reminds me of like Robin Hood-esque kind of, kind of costumey wear, doesn't it? But then that is from that time period. Though. Gotta love it. Lenny VA and Ito VA. Yeah, I love them. They're both, they're both great. That's interesting. Does anybody else find it weird that we have not seen a single Notlon NPC? Looks like a Morion. What's that? I have no idea what that is, but it sounds really cool. Okay, back to this though. We'll get back to that in a second. So yes, the flowers born in sin, pure let's yet spotless. In this world all alone. But here in the house and then the bunnies. And the hearth, you will grow up to be All right, we're going to pause here. What do you think this represents? This doctor with the halo? I'm trying to remember what Dottore was represented as in Nahida's little allegory. See, yeah, like the, I thought this was Dottore initially. I'm like, is that Dottore? <laughs> And why is he depicted with a halo? The mother? Hmm. There is absolutely no reason to represent Dottore as being double-faced with a halo. Well, if you think about Plague Doctors, which Dottore kind of references, they are kind of duplicitous. Because a lot of them sold like bullshit cures. He's like, it's, it's ironic for him to be a doctor in the first place because he's not really helping people. He has that mask in the manga. That's interesting. Halo because mother only acts kind, but she is cruel. Yeah, she's... We'll talk about what character archetype she actually is because there's a name for it and it has been mentioned in Genshin in connection with a very important character. But we'll talk about that when Mama shows up and her two-faced ass. The doll kind of looks like Dottore in the comic. See, yeah, that's what I was initially thinking. Like, this was Dottore, but 
Maybe both older bunnies are mother. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, this dude is wearing, you know what those doctors wear on their heads? Those little, what is that called? I have no idea what it's called. It's not a stethoscope because he's got the stethoscope. I don't know what the little head thing is called. Or maybe this is just like a headband. I don't fucking know. I think it's the mother because she only acts kind but is cruel in reality. Interesting, interesting. So people think it's the mother. People think it's Tatore. I think it would work for either or. It's also interesting, the coloring too. <laughs> Which we'll talk about. Because if this is like the mother, it would make sense. Um, notice the white and blue. Very reminiscent of a certain character aligned with the moon. But then also the red coloring. Again, very reminiscent of another character who's probably associated with the moon, but also Honkai Impact 3rd because the duplicity between Kiana and then the Hersher of the Void. But why a doctor? Well, why a doctor? I don't fucking know. That's why I thought it was initially Dottori. That he might have been doing checkups and shit on the House of the Hearth people. But who knows. Later in the trailer, it shows drugs and dogs. Yeah, like, like they were being experimented on slash maybe that was also Arlequino's medicine. But we'll talk about that later. And why a bat as well? Like a vampire bat? Yeah, I have no idea. Because bats have a reputation of sucking blood. Yeah, if it's the mom, why a doctor? That's what I'm questioning. It could represent multiple things, though. But yeah, my immediate thought was Dottori. Yeah, and I was thinking of also the allegory again from Nahida's little fairy tale about Scaramouche's life. And how Dottori was depicted as like a monster hiding in as a fox. Which is interesting because that's like being a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? So there's parallels there between Arlecchino and Dottore being duplicitous. But also between the mother of the House of the Hearth being a duplicitous person. Wasn't Perrin Harry's orphanage trying to find a descender theoretically? Yeah, they were, they were supposed to be finding descenders. Or no, they were supposed to be housing descenders. I think the Universitas Magistrorum was the one that was actually tasked with finding Descenders. Which, by the way, the Universitas Magistrorum, we know for a fact that, well, for a fact, it was highly implied that Ryan Daughter was a part of that, which makes it interesting because she was likely present for the Crimson Moon Dynasty as well, because the Crimson Moon Dynasty focused on alchemy. And she's an alchemist, so she was probably part of that dynasty as well. Okay, yeah, let's play. Let's keep playing. But here in the House of the Hearth, you will grow up to be strong. Your goal is to learn to compete, to defeat all your brothers and sisters in battle, and become king. So, let's talk about this. Like I said before i really do think that conria and celestia were working together and it's possible that conria was trying to find descenders for celestia why would that be beneficial for celestia questions to you like why would that be beneficial and what do you think if anything that has to do with this line your goal is to learn to compete to defeat all your brothers and sister in battle and become king It just makes me wonder because descenders are supposed to have wills that rival the world. It makes me wonder if they were really grooming the next primordial one. Because the one currently in heaven is not a descender. I guarantee you that she is not a fucking descender. I think she's a fake descender. Because there are a lot of things that just don't add up. Right. And 
we know that descenders have value to Celestia because they went through the whole um they went through the whole process of converting one of the remains of a descender into the Gnosis just to house the authorities of the dragons, which further kind of implies that the person who's ruling Celestia right now isn't really a descender because how would the primordial one lose their lose their absolute authority? How? Unless they never had it to begin with. It just doesn't make any sense. Have we heard mentions of any king other than King Ermin? No. Aside from um, what's-his-face, but he came after King Ermin. That one um, Alberic dude? Hod, Hod, something with an H. Somebody remind me. The Fisher King dude. Because his name is mentioned in um, a bunch of Arthurian stuff. Um, shit, what's his name? Well, yeah, other than like King Remus and King Deshret, right? Sorry, I was thinking specifically in Conria, like if we've heard of another Conrian king. Anfortis, thank you. Thank you, Anfortis. I don't know why I was thinking H. Probably because I, I was thinking Hadera, which is another... I think that's a completely separate Alberic person. But yes, Anfortis. He was like a... Um, he was a regent. But the only king of Conria that we technically know of is Ermin. I don't think the Nosy's house housed dragon authority, considering Nouvellet reclaimed his full authority from the divine throne alone with him also viewing the Gnosis as useless to him. Then the question is, what do the Gnosis contain? In the Legend of Saha, Hoyo versus Hoyo's first game, the main character has to destroy the wishes of all people to defeat the gods. Defeat all your brother and sisters to become king. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, but I thought, yeah, I thought Nuvi talks about it. No, there were, that there were three descenders and the primordial one lost too much power in the war and could not control things anymore. So primordial one and the other descender made Gnosis out of the third. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, because the primordial one lost his absolute authority. And I say his, it could be a girl. It could be nothing. It could be an androgynous being. We don't know. Um, but yeah, that was discussed in Nuvi's uh, story. But it was my interpretation that the Gnosis did, in fact, have some of the authority, the draconic authority. And we know from Venti that the Gnosis, it would make sense, actually, if, for example, the thrones, the, which is what uh, Fosalor destroyed, um in order to basically allow Nouvellet to get his authority back. It would make sense if those thrones were in Celestia, whether in a metaphysical way or something, because Venti did say that the Gnosis connect directly to Celestia's power. So they could be, re they could be connected to the authority nonetheless. Is the Traveler recorded in Ermansoul? Technically, no. But, I mean, it might be possible to record them via a fairy tale, maybe. Maybe Gnosis resonate with the thrones? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like the Gnosis just receive the power and channel it. Gnosis might just be weapons that ensure the Archons have the power to uphold the status quo against any rogue gods or sovereigns. Yeah, like the Gnosis themselves... What the Primordial One did with the quote-unquote one who came after when they created the Gnosis is basically create a new world order, if that makes sense to you guys. I'm not explaining that, though. Okay, wait, okay, 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 okay. Let's continue. <laughs> but yes, I kind of, I kind of do think, I kind of do think Conria was trying to look for descenders for Celestia. And they may have been looking for another primordial one. 
AKA someone who could take the place of the original. But who knows? We'll see. Be strong. Your goal is to learn, to compete, to defeat all your brothers and sisters oh in gosh. battle, and become king. I love how <laughs> I think it's hilarious that they're all like, oh my God, this is so interesting. It's so fun to learn about how we're going to murder each other. <laughs> also, you know what's interesting? First of all, she's got a lot of parallels to Mother Babel or Matriarch Babel, which is interesting because Matriarch Mother, uh huh. Um, but Matriarch Babel and Jet also have parallels with I'm gonna tell you the sustainer of heavenly principles of the first Sealy, but I'm not explaining that. But that's what's going on here, and I see it. Also, her little necklace thing looks a lot like the sinner for whatever fucking reason. Don't know why. Um, let me get rid of the subtitles. This crown as well looks very reminiscent to me of the crown worn by the king from the Gnostic chorus, which is interesting. Which also makes me think they were fucking trying to make a primordial one. But it is what it is. Just this saying. Book and game, by the way. Wait, is this a real book in the game? Okay, but we're going to continue. They are innocent and probably don't know the murder part. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like, defeat your brothers and sisters could doesn't necessarily mean kill them. It just means beat them up. Oh, yeah, there was a prince in the battle class story, too. Yes, and a princess. But this crown specifically to me looks like the one the king was wearing, which makes sense for this. Where's Pear Ware? Didn't she want to hear the story? Excuse me, mother. She's doing a funeral for her spider. That child. Maybe her curse is flaring up again. Clairvy. I'm really wondering what her curse actually is and if it has anything to do with the curse of the wilderness because she could be... There's several different explanations. She could be partially of Conrian descent. And she got this curse from the bloodline, from people who were not pure Conrians. There's also, she could just be afflicted with god juice. Dead god juice. That's also a thing. We could be looking at um, a situation like Kale or, you know, with Elazar and everything. Something similar to that. But I do think, obviously, it has something to do with forbidden knowledge. Her curse seems to be triggered by emotions. That's the other thing, which is why it makes sense now why she's like very emotionless because she has to keep her emotions in control. Oh, yeah, and then she has a spider. So I guess. I guess her thingy looks like a spider, but I'd also argue I, I still think it also looks like a crab. I'm not going to lie, but only because it fits so well with the Princess Marcotte stuff. Would the curse of the wilderness flare up? I feel like it's a one-time thing. That's true. Ah. Plus, the curse of the wilderness, like, just straight up turns people into fucking hilly churls, so. But again, with the whole catter thing and catter's hands looking like that and catter being, like, a hilly churl, like, a consciousness that was put inside of a hilly churl, it just, I don't know. I don't know. I definitely think it resonates with death. Whatever the curse is, it feels like a direct resonation. I agree with that. Well, since you've mentioned, there's a card in the Genshin TCG that represents the goddess of flowers and she has pink hair. Oh yeah, there's like 
Yeah, I remember that. That represents the artifacts that that's like based on the goddess of flowers. Yeah, it's very interesting. You want to know who else has pink hair? That's not in Genshin, but that Genshin is definitely going to bring up fucking Elysia. You know, you want to know the interesting thing about Elysia? She was the Hersher of human, right? Or humanity, or Hersher of ego. Wait, Hersher of ego? She loved humanity, though. You want to know what else loves humanity? Seelys. Oh, we never even talked about... We'll talk about it. The fucking Lumiduce Bell symbolism. Also, this is something we'll talk about. <laughs> Her fucking eyes. Um, I kind of think it's because she's not supposed to see anything. And that she's blind, in a sense. But also, that has to do with the theory that I'm doing on King Ermin. And that he's he's the blind man. He's the blind man of fucking Genshin Impact. He, it's every, he's everything that we've been looking for. He's the blind man, guys. You don't have to know what that means right now, though. Don't worry about it. But that's also reminiscent now that I'm thinking about of Columbina, who has a veil over her eyes. It's like they're not supposed to see anything. The Lumiduce Bell. Doesn't this represent partings? Which is so fucking sad, given what's going on here. <laughs> Sue sh said she sacrifices herself in every timeline. What if her Genshin counterpart already sacrificed herself? What if her Genshin counterpart made the Genesis Pearl? And the Shining Shades? And the Moon Sisters? But that's just a theory that I'm not going to explain right now. Yes, parting and reunion. This is very sad. You know what? It looks like it looks like Genshin, or excuse me, Fontaine now has two important flowers. The rainbow rose, which also has to do with the moon inherently because there's been a lot of rainbow references with moon-aligned characters and the omni element, and also the fact that Iris, um, which by the way, in that fun little film event, God, we have so many things to talk about. The fun little film event that was just about two siblings that killed their father. I hope you guys were paying attention to that because that was super important. But one of the characters played by Ayaka of all people, which is very interesting for reasons I'm not going to explain right now. Her name was Iris and Iris is the goddess of the rainbow. But in Greek, that also means the halo of the fucking moon. So rainbow roses are really important. Lumiduce bells seem to be very important. Holy crap. I'm surprised the lamp grass isn't related to the moon, right? There are a lot of flowers that you totally skipped 4.3. Guys, those were important. Those were important events. But don't worry, we'll talk about it. My brain is tired. It's fried. Don't worry. I'm going to fry it even more. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not important right now. She's so cute, by the way. This is adorable. You, you want some? Sure. Uh. You must know spiders don't eat cake. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> the birds are from their cage. Sunbeams filter through the foliage. This is so cute. That the song is really good. Look, I've never expected to get more lore from petting cats, right? Oh, I see what you mean. Um, I see what people mean when people said that's the same as Columbina's little bow. I'm assuming you mean this, right? Hold on, let's pull up Columbina. Genshin. Columbina. Uh, is it on this one? Oh, well, this took me right to the wiki. Yeah, right there. Interesting. Okay. Lumidus Bell is said to represent parting and the wish for reunion. 
which is sad. Which is sad too because they might get reunited in 4.6. At least briefly. At least like an imaginative version of her. Putting aside the pink girl, I don't think we ever see the other orphanage kids either, right? Oh, you mean like the current people in the House of the Hearth? No, I don't think we do. I mean, father is meant to be her lover, which is interesting. Because if, if she actually is a parallel to King Ermin, if Arlequino is, then it means then it means that he may have he may have loved a moon, which makes sense because Ermin might be a son. We saw some in the Sumeru world quest. Oh yeah, we technically have seen them as NPCs. Oh, this is what I meant to ask people. Sorry, not to pause again. But I've seen a lot of people say that Clervy is like actually the previous knaves like blood related daughter is this true i mean i would believe it because they do look similar but i didn't know if that was just like a something that people were saying or something that's like been confirmed to be true and you know what now that i'm looking at it her dress like her outfit is kind it has a lot of similarities to columbina's like fluffy white outfit thingy now that i'm looking at it i hope so i think so yeah in chinese she said biological daughter okay that's important because that's kind of how i interpreted this scene at first when i watched this i was like yeah it sounds like they're related which is fucked up but yeah and also it's very important though for parallels gosh i need to, i need to get to work so you can see all of this and i can talk about it it's clear in the japanese and chinese versions gotcha i like that i like that better to be honest i like that they're related i heard that in Snishnaya. There's that exact same fucking gap we can see in the sky in game. When we're grown up, shall we go see it together? <laughs> oh, this is so sad. Lance, I missed you too. By the way, your thumbnail says fat her. Fucking Ashikai said something about that yesterday. <laughs> All right, here's another debate. What happened in this scene? Did she kill herself or did Arlequino kill her? I want to hear it. But yeah, for the thumbnail, I, I couldn't fit. I wanted three words on each side and it turned out to be that. Don't blame me. <laughs> Duel to be the next king. How did even, how did this all start? Do you think that um, Clervy's mama told her to go fight Arlequino? Do you think it was a similar situation to um, the one that Mother Babel tried to put us in, um, in the Tanit tribe quests, where she tried to get Jet and us to murder each other? Do you think it ended up like that? And I kind of do think it did. She drugged. Ooh, ooh. Video coming when? Before 4.7. <laughs> so somewhere during 4.6. That's my goal. She killed herself, I believe. Okay, yeah, because there's like a... So here's the sword. She apologizes. Okay, and then we can clearly see, like right here, there's a blood stain, right? Where the sword presumably went in. I'm trying to see if, if Arlequino's clothes are actually cut here because it's stupid fucking bars in the way. How do I make this disappear?
rod. I can't really tell. She said thank you maybe for killing her? Maybe. I think Clervy faked our attack fake attacked Arlequino. Arla responded to the attack and killed her because I'm sure neither wanted to kill each other. Yeah. Which is sad. Based on how shock father looks, I'm placing my bets on Clervy throwing herself onto the sword. That would make sense. There's a frame of a syringe, so maybe she was drugged. She falls with the sword, so maybe she killed herself. Maybe. It's also likely that the syringe was used for Arlequino curse suppression. Possibly. I think that's just blood from Clervy. See, that's why I was trying to find out if there's like a cut right here, but I can't really fucking tell. Yeah, whatever. Oh, this lady's evil. She gonna get it. What if Arlequino told her she doesn't want to fight and she tricked her into doing so and intentionally walked towards the sword? Maybe. Her reflection still holds the sword. Well, holds a sword, right? Do we know if it's hers or do we know if the sword that stabbed? I should have pruned this flower long ago. Not waited. Clervy is the same one. How grotesque. Wouldn't you agree? In the next frame, she holds it and it's clean. Okay, interesting. Regardless of how it's happened, it's clear none of them wanted for it to happen. Yeah. And that this lady is to blame. And also that she plotted to kill her own daughter. So there's that. And kindness are such beautiful qualities. Sadly, they're all so useless. But yeah, this is very reminiscent of Matriarch Babel and Jet. This just makes me excited for the fucking anime whenever it comes out. <laughs> A bird tied down will never fly the nest. You are no exception. There's a lot of talk about the birds and leaving the nest and everything, which is very interesting because that has parallels to Pear the Penguin, which is about a penguin that wants to fly. And then, of course, Arlequino's name is Pear Ware. What are these symbols, by the way, on her arm? Have we ever seen them? Like, I mean, like, in, in the in-game lore, like, any symbols symbol similar to this on her arm. No one knows. We saw them in 4.1. Might be part of the curse. Yeah, because her mother wanted to make a new king, so they have to kill each other, but Clervy didn't want to kill Arlequino. Yeah. The sword that stabbed Clervy fell with her, but Perware still holds a sword in her right arm, and it's clean. Yeah. I assume all the kids were made to fight, as we see Lily's sword, girl with the orange hair. Oh, yeah. Interest in yours dress? Oh. Interesting. Okay, wait. So her curse is acting up. She sees the Lumi Deuce Bell flowers. And then she's like, I'm about to kill this bitch. Surrender. Let your mother guide you, and you shall become the one true king. Uh, 
then all of a sudden she gets super badass. Ooh, this is so cool. In my grandest Delulus, the Saritza is singing Emberfire. You know what? I vibe with that. Because I think that Saritza is going to play on this mother-daughter thing as well. You want to know what's interesting about this as well? So, for those of you that play Honkai Star Rail, you know Bellabog? And Bronia? And then Sis... Uh, uh, Cocolia. There we go. Holy shit, I almost called her Cecilia. What's interesting about that, and also still makes me think that Conria was working for Celestia and was trying to find a descender for them, is that the supreme whatever you call them, the supreme leader, whatever the title is for Bellabog, she chose Bronia and picked Bronia from the underground from an orphanage and she was grooming her to be the next supreme leader now the underground underworld whatever it's called in Balabok has like a ton of I could go on and on but it has a ton of fucking parallels with Conria and I think it's really interesting that they chose that they continuously choose to do this mother daughter thing yeah, Supreme Guardian, thank you. Supreme Guardian, I'll, I'll have to remember that. If Conria worked with Celestia, I wonder why Dane hates the gods so much. Because the gods ain't shit. They're, they're, they're out for themselves. But also remember this, for those who might be skeptical about the whole Conria-Celestia thing, Conrians are losing their fucking memories right now. So do they even remember? It's kind of questionable what information they know at this point. Especially since Dainslip doesn't even remember his youth. Snezhnaya will definitely mirror Bronya's dynamic with Kokolia in a way. Maybe previous Cryo Archon. That's what I'm thinking. I'm also probably thinking the previous Cryo Archon may not have been as nice. This is all very important. Her being imprisoned, her being charged with murder. God, I wish I could talk about this right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and then she sees the auroras. I don't know, it feels like Conrad has more beef with the Abyss than Celestia. Well, follows. I hereby pardon we'll see. your crime and bestow upon you a new name. This title and its legacy of bloodshed are now yours to bear. My yeah, the whole Celestia is evil is misleading. Well, knave. I don't think... Hmm. How do I put this? There are a lot of people in Celestia that are bad. Let's just put it that way. I, I really think that. <laughs> Come with me. I will raise you as my child, like a strict and unfeeling father. It's interesting how she chose to become the opposite of what her mother was, but kind of, <sighs> but kind of not, because you're still raising orphans to kill each other. Well, not kill each other, but possibly die in the battlefield, which I don't know if that's any better, but here we are. Child soldiers are bad. <laughs> That's my TED talk for the day. Hold on. Let me show you a good reason why I think. Um, hello. C can you see? Can you hear? Are we back? Are, are we back? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. I think we're back. I hope we're back. 
Goodness gracious, that was that was horrible. I am so sorry about that. We can see in here. Great. Okay. <laughs> Good. Oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna go back to what I wanted to show <laughs> to show you before Celestia fucking said no. What's hilarious is that person forbidden knowledge came into the chat like immediately after this happened. You know, I blame you forbidden knowledge. <laughs> Just kidding. What? Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm so sorry about that. But we are we are live and we are alive. And I wanted to show you. We were talking about why why Celestia is not good people <laughs> at least some of them i think the sustainer will actually be a lot more complicated um but most of them are awful like okay so you see this panel right here where vanessa asks about celestia and then venti thinks of these three figures clad in gray and then there's that crimson background which is also interesting now thinking about it because of the crimson moon stuff but if you look at the Nahida's happy birthday trailer which is something i pointed out in my Nahida and ruka devada trailer or video they use the exact same coloring for the background and then they present the sages of the academia in the exact same way they present these characters, which is why I think these these characters are gonna be the assholes. Yeah. Cause the sages were pieces of shit. Like they were awful. Which is why I think these people will be awful too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like look at that. Poor Nahida. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> back to this. So, oh, this is so interesting. A bird tied down will never fly the nest. You are not Luckily, we have all hate them now and our friends. Yes. A lot of people who surround Nahida and support her. By the way, does she have an element? I was trying to figure this out. Like, does does this lady ever use any one of the elements? Anyone notice how mother and father's clothing is inverted? Oh yeah, it is totally inverted. Yeah. White bow tie, black upper shirt thingy, white, black. Yeah, yeah, it is inverted. Hydro or cryo? That's what I was thinking, but I have no idea. Oh yeah, that kind of actually did look like hydro, didn't it? When she formed it. Yeah, it looked like she formed it from water. So that is hydro. But you see that? Which would make sense. Water and fire, opposites. Cryo? Maybe it's maybe it is cryo, but that looked like hydro. So does Arlie already have a vision there? We don't know, actually, do we? We don't actually see her vision, which is interesting. No vision. I think it's her curse. Surrender. Let your mother guide you, and you yeah, I thought it was Hydro, based on that little puddle thingy, swordy thingy. Yeah, I think it's her curse that's giving her that power, right? Because she wears her vision on her back, but we're not really seeing any back shots. God, this song. Girl, you just got bodied.
Ooh, gives you chills. Fake vision? Mm hmm. Have you ever read the descriptions of the red and blue crown finches? I sense deep are the lore in the entries. No, I have not. Maybe we should look at them. There's a lot of bird lore that just like there's lore smidged in with like birds and stuff, and it's funny. A rainbow colored aura. Aurora, I mean, which is interesting. Her Majesty oh, Snizhnai is going to be really pretty. Creed as follows. I hereby pardon your crimes and bestow up. Look at this fucking clown. Like, why? <laughs> he just, I get he's like a puppet. <laughs> Or like he's not, he's inorganic. He's not made from flesh and blood, but like, did you really have to fucking wear shorts and you have your coat open? Like you just don't give a fuck. <laughs> she got pancaked against the roof. Yeah, bye mom. Like fuck her. She fucking got wrecked. Upon you and, and that was a freaking harbinger. <laughs> like. How strong is Arlequino? I know she's ranked four, but like, dang. I also think it's funny that they ranked her higher than freaking Scaramumu La Senora as well. Oh, that was the other question. How old is Arlequino? Like, is she going to be 500 years old like the rest of these mug peoples? Or is she going to be like younger, like child? I'm I I don't know yet. You name this He's made of wood. And its legacy of oh yeah, there was that thing, right? Implying that he was made from Urban Soul. My poor mad cursed knave. That line cursed. This, this title and its and legacy of bloodshed are now yours to bear, my poor mad cursed knave. Now, I really can't talk about this, but there is a reason why all of this ties to Ermin. It has to do with the theory that I'm that that I've cooked up um, based on a character that I have been haunted by since Inazuma's release. Like this one character has really annoyed me and I've seen them in every region but I never knew who it necessarily was originally I thought it was Dainsliff but now I'm kind of thinking it is King Ermin and I think you guys are gonna like this theory because everything going on with Arlequino right now the imprisonment everything they just keep doing this you they keep name. fucking doing this, this title and its legacy of bloodshed are now yours They keep to fucking doing this story Your over and over again. Cursed. You don't have to get it now, but you will when the theory releases. Of course it ties to Ermin, what doesn't? Yeah, true. I highly doubt it's 500 years old. Yeah, I kind of like, no, because Fremine was there. Oh, you're right, yeah. Herp derp, you're right. No, because... Fremine was there when the previous Knave was there. So yeah, she's pretty young. That makes me even more interested in where the fuck she came from. You are totally right, yeah. So she's definitely not 500, well, yeah, she's definitely not 500 years old. Looking forward to it. I hope you guys do like it. <laughs> I feel like I saw a calculation predicting she was in her 30s-ish. I Yeah, it seems like that's the case. Probably like flat 30. I'd say it's early 30s, probably. Gosh, she's... There's so much in this trailer, y'all. You don't even know the half of it. I'm... <laughs> All I'll say is this. Just pay attention to the themes. The major themes that 
are being introduced here. So like the Traveler references the House of the Hearth and the parallels between Per and Harry. The mother-daughter thing is extremely important. Oh my God, please, if there's anything out of this that you take away, take away the mother-daughter thing because it's very important. And then also Arlequino in general. Think about the themes that they've used. The imprisonment. The bestowal of a new name. All of that. So it seems like Arla has been a harbinger for approximately 10 years. Yeah, that seems about right. Possibly Arlequino's age will be the same age as Shen, huh? Maybe. Now I'm confused as to how old Child was to be named youngest harbinger. Wasn't he like 13 or something? Like he was young. Something like that. How old is he now, actually, on that thought? Like, when did the others join? Good question. So we know Senora joined 500 years ago. Capitano's up. He's questionable, but probably, he's probably like, he's probably super old. Scaramouche joined roughly what, like 400-ish years ago? Right? Because that's when all of the, um, the stuff went down at the sword factory with those people. Are we going to see an evil side of Arlequino? I feel like we're going to see a quote unquote evil side in 4.6 because we're going to fight her, but I don't think she's all that bad. At least in comparison to the actual bad characters in this game. Child's in his 20s. Did I see the animation for the Moonlit Bamboo Forest? No. Moonlit. But I did watch a, um, a men's lift video where it was like partially in it and i was like where the fuck did this come from and i think she said it came from the hoyo fair and it's like an official thing Ooh, let's watch it i've never seen this sweet flowers and then there's that one other flower whose name i'm forgetting right now The village looks so small from here. Wait, I didn't know it was Hello, official. Everyone. That's what she said. I don't know. But I can't just stay in this boring village forever. Oh, Glaze Lily. Thank you. Ooh. This is so good. The animation is so fucking good. The forest is full of monsters. Wicked foxes who steal the souls of travelers turning them into drums beware and there are also who a spirit who fought beside our dear lord and now lurk in the deepest springs the village elders and their superstitions i heard the dear lord is a dragon why would he need horses to help him i'm done with their nonsense when i get to the ua harbor Oh, does he not yeah. see them? I'll explore the wonders of the world. Or is that just in his imagination? <laughs> so much to discover. Ooh, there was Orobashi. I might even and Inazuma. The Lord himself. <laughs> what do you say? <gasps> Ooh, a dragon. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier with the fox procession that the dude ran into. This is where that came from. Horse spirit, hmm? Oh yeah, it's super implied in the book that the horse spirit was like the one that pulled the carriage for the moon sisters. Or one of the horses that did. Ooh. 
Boy, you about to get taken to the fucking spirit world. You better run. And there he goes. Isn't Ho Hoyo Fair a compilation of fan-made animations? Oh, so this is just fan-made. Oh, there were Seelies. And there's the moon horse spirit lady. Oh, that's it? Fuck. <laughs> Produced by Passion, based on the original story, Moonlit Bamboo Forest from Genshin Impact. Oh, so it is fan-made. Okay. Still pretty cool. That is really cool. Talents like these, yes, yes, this person is very talented. I'm giving this a like. That was really nice. Yeah, this is where I got it from. This is the video I watched where she was talking about it. Minsliff. Passion is an official animation studio. Oh, is it? Oh. Interesting. So then it is official? Question mark? Hey, yeah, whatever. Let's watch, let's watch Arlecchino step on somebody and make their brains go <laughs> This was a nasty trailer. Or teaser. It makes actual anime. That's pretty cool. I'm sorry, father. Oh, this is just that depression. When I saw those emaciated patients, those poor children, the futile hope in their eyes. I've told you before, recklessness always leads to failure. But it was not wholly in vain. I shall settle the rest. Ah, those fools. They will never know the wonders of wealth. I love that in all of her promotional material, Arlecchino is killing someone. That's hilarious and true. <laughs> like she just makes his head pop like a grape. That is very violent. So like on her face, is that like brain, brain juice matter? Father, Blood from the brain? Face. Fremenay, we can take in a few more literal brain juice. Ugh. I have acquired some new funds. Oh, she really is Batman in okay. a way. Well, Batman doesn't kill people, though. <laughs> well, supposedly. Mission accomplished. See, yeah, it is you brain can sleep juice. Now. This is sad. Thank is this the? You. By the way, people were saying this kid is like the same as um. Genshin Arlecchino. Let's see if it pops up. Yes, it does. The same kid as this one. Is that true? They have different colored eyes. Like he has green eyes. And this one, well, actually, hmm. This might just be the lighting. They kind of do look like each other. Don't think so. Looks like the looks the same as the Fatui operative. Oh, you mean the um the new one, like one of Arlequino's operatives. One of those two ladies. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you. Once I'm better. You ain't I'll getting start better. My next Rest mission. in peace. Oh yeah, we beat them up too. Well. I really like how they did her hair. Those who parade their virtues often do the most evil. Like she has really cool hair. We are not like them. Rest in peace. Snagetha. Oh, the wolf mask lady? Interesting. My child. Oh. 
Wait, okay, so that that was the um this is that uh grave site where Callus is buried, correct? Where Navia was paying her respects, and also probably where gravestones were put for all the people who died in Poisson when the flood came. And that's why Arlequino was there because she was because <gasps> she was mourning the the oh 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 that's very depressing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well. Pain. She is just straight up pain. Like a strict and un my answer. I'm sorry, we have to rewatch this because it's just that good. It's the gravesite where everyone is buried. There's really one. To this world all alone. <laughs> but here in the house of the hearth, you will grow up to be strong. Your goal is. Do we to think the reason Arla seems cold is because she has to keep her emotions in check due to her curse? Yeah, it's likely that. And become king. Where is Perwer? Didn't she want to hear the story? Excuse me, mother. She's doing a funeral for her spider. That child. Maybe her curse is flaring up again. Clairvy, see to her. Oh, okay. Baby Arlequino, so cute. I want cake. They're so. Oh, this story is so sad. If Arlequino is pain, I am a masochist. I hear you. This video gives me hope that the anime is great too, if it still exists, that is. Oh yeah, I think we can expect great things. Green eyes. You know what else is green? Animo. Do mothers usually just ignore that? I heard that in Smeshnaya, colored light dances in the sky at night. When we are grown up, shall we go see it together? <laughs> Ubisoft is too busy. Oh, UFO table. UFO table? Is that how you say that? UFO table. Whatever. However you say it. Not sure if you noticed when she is with Clervy, her curse is barely there. Yes, because Clervy's she they the fucking lovers they're just great. But then mother had to get in the way of this. Bye, girl. Yeah, she's holding the sword and it's clean. Like right there. Interesting. Oh my god, they're roommates. That's how history will remember them. Mother beat her biological daughter, Clervy, up. Yeah. Yeah, mother's a piece of shit. Also, I really want Arla to have to either have a bunny plush or Clairvy's necklace. That would be great. I should have pruned this flower long ago, not waited till it wilts. Oh, yeah, God. I'm. I'm. I really think it's sus that her necklace looks like the fucking sinner. <laughs> uh, and Deshret's little crystal thing that he turns into in that one animation. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, she's just evil. Don't worry, guys. Clairvy will be seen in 4.6 copium. I mean, maybe. Maybe she's has something to do with that pink-haired girl. That Fremenet is possibly hiding from Arlequino. 
what are these flowers? They're Lumi Deuce Bells, I believe, which are in-game flowers representing parting and reunion, which is so appropriate for this. Wait, that was a shot of her back. She's not, she doesn't have a vision. She doesn't have a vision. It's not on her back. God dang it. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see it. The mother clearly has a power during the fight, but we also don't see a vision delusion on her, right? That is also true, but it does look like she's using like hydro, low key. so good and then it crescendos like at this moment so good damn mother was slightly insane eh, slightly <laughs> she was just gone they confirm in her character introduction that the flame power flows in her blood. Okay, so like, um, so like La Senora, basically, right? Then what the fuck did she need a vision for? I'm interested now even more than to see like her vision story. Her Majesty the Tsaritsa has decreed as follows. It's possible Arlequino's vision I is fake. True. Pardon your crimes and true, bestow true. upon you a new name. I wonder if it has something to do with the ley line, like we're seeing a memory of Clervy. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, that she could be a manifestation of the ley lines. Similar to like Rue. Or like just ley line outcrops and blossoms in general. Because like in this world, memories hold power. Come with me. I will raise you as my child. Like a strict and unfeeling father. Such a good trailer. Kiana may have been Hoyo's last great MC. Traveler may never get a trailer this wonderful. Hopefully they do. Like, I'm really hoping the anime gets to showcase Ether and Lumine in good ways. I'm kind of hoping, <clears throat> you know, just to appease everybody because there are people who get mad at this. But that they switch between Ether and Lumine. And like main character, you know, abyss sibling roles. I don't know how they're going to do that, but it would be interesting. Leyline shenanigans. It's always Leyline shenanigans, my friend. Oh my goodness, but this was an interesting, this is such an interesting trailer. When does the patch get released? Tuesday, Wednesday, it's Wednesday, isn't it? Like Wednesday night or is it Tuesday night? I can't remember. I know it depends on where you live too, but I think for America, which, which is it? It's like Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday. Which? Did you see her signature pole arm? It has the same glittery texture like Skirk and the sustainer, or am I just coping? You are definitely not coping because all the Crimson Moon stuff definitely goes back to the sustainer. So you're not coping. Tuesday night for North America, Wednesday morning for Europe. Uh, okay. 
but we're literally a few days. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so exciting. And then we get Remuria. We get Remuria. Oh, it's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. So what's going to be available when the patch, like, releases? Is it is it going to be Arlequino Story Quest? Remuria should be unlocked. I'm assuming Sino stuff isn't happening until later, right? They wouldn't put all that in the beginning. When will we get Arlequino's trailer? I mean, it should be soon because we got the teaser and it's the 20th now. I'd say either Monday or tomorrow or maybe even tonight. Who knows? I'm actually interested to see what um, Danesliff has to say about her. Now that you mention it, I want to see her collected miscellany. I'm looking forward to Remuria lore as well. Yeah, Sino should be like the second half-ish. What if her curse is related to Sertology? Flaming sword of Surtur in mythology. Surtur brings forth the flames that engulf the earth. That's interesting. She could have something to do with him. Or her. Whoever Sertology is. Or is she not going to get a standard trailer like the others? It'd be weird if she didn't. I feel like she will. Hmm. Imagine if it's Alice instead of Danesliff. That would be curious. Because then it's like, why is Alice doing hers? Which would be, that would be interesting though, because then it's like, oh, is this kind of implying because Arlequino is like a parallel to Perrin Harry that Alice has something to do with Conria, which we already know she kind of does because Brian daughter. Yeah, the story quests and then um, Remuria. I cannot wait. Here, let me pull up. Let me log back into Genshin because I never did that. Yeah, Arlequino will be running with Linny. And then we'll get Baiju and the Wanderer later on, which is interesting. Artifact lore? I completely forgot about the fucking artifact. Because we are getting a new set, right? Yeah, we are getting two new sets. Can't wait to read that. Gosh, y'all. Remuria is going to be crazy. That's what I feel like. Just pay attention for any little Conria bits that you can get from there. Like from a parallelistic sense, a, symbo a symbolic sense. And then it has to do with music. Like it's heavily involved in music. And which is also why I think the Fortuna thing has to do with the moon. Because the moon in this game has to do with music. And I'd also be looking for Venti parallels as well, because he has everything to do with music and kind of the moon as well. But also the sun. Because Venti is a sun. He is the sun. He's the third descender. <laughs> no, I'm not explaining. I want Remus lore so bad, so do I. Oh. Did I do this? No, I didn't. I'll do it later. Do y'all do the surveys? You should. I don't even know if they listen to them. Mm 
I will say they're more communicative um, than some of the other games that I've played. And I mean Hoyoverse. But I never know if they actually look at the surveys or all of the surveys. Ugh, well, clearly they don't fucking read all of them. Daughters of Prose and Song. Yes. The Daughters of Prose and Song music. Fortuna. Is he Son Goku? Maybe. Maybe Venti is. Maybe he isn't. Oh, you decided to make music even more relevant because it's music. It's a music studio that makes games on the side. Yeah. Huh. True. Because their music slaps. Their music is just really good. I'm really sad that we have nothing to do. Oh, you're looking at, hold on. I thought y'all were looking at my Genshin window this entire time. I forgot to switch it over. And by entire time, I mean like five minutes because I just pulled this up. Oh, I should probably turn the volume back on, huh? There. But it's sad. There's like nothing to do right now. I don't even know what to spend my resin on. Is what? Well, that's spoilers, isn't it? I'm not going to ask that question. But I think maybe some of you knew, probably know what I was about to ask. And it deals with Arlecchino, but I'm not going to ask. There's always TCG. Oh, God. Give me your resin. I could if I would. I would if I could. There we go. I kind of wish that Genshin had a similar system to Star Rail where it like saves a set amount of accumulated resin. You know, more than this bullshit because I haven't played for days. I would have thousands of resin right now if they allowed for more more stocking up of resin. Ooh, do the ley lines? I mean, I guess. Am I done pre-farming for father? That was going to be my question. I I don't know what what materials she needs. That's how out of the loop I've been. I have no idea what she needs. But we can do the ley line blossom thingies. Uh Let's do a Mora one. Because who doesn't like money? For real, it would have been so helpful when I was sick for a whole month. Right, like... There are several reasons why people will put down the game. So... To have like a nice little cushion when you come back would be nice. But they... And no, the stellar reunion is not enough in my opinion. I need a good way to save resin. Now disappear. Die. Thank you. Also, now that I just realized Lenny's little Creature thingy is a cat too, isn't it? Like a cat-like thingy. Interesting. Cats are the moon, cats are the moon, cats are the moon. Rainbow roses, order books, regular Fatui materials. Ah, oh, crap. Am I gonna have to farm her little subordinate thingies? Oh, you said regular ones, right? Or is it specifically... Her little operatives. Illusion 
Why do I have Lenny in this party? He's unnecessary for this. Let me weave you no, my sword. Yeah, whatever. I probably needed him for like a daily commission or something that needed an archer. All right, let's do this one as the last one. Ah, yes, the dogs are the sun. Yes, the dogs literally are the sun. Oh my gosh, and I have real history to prove that. See the Lumi Deuce bell? Oh. Oh. You're so sad. Body and mind. What kind of flower is the Lumi Deuce bell, actually? Is it a lotus? Is it a lily flower? And if it's a lily flower, that would be really suspicious. Body and mind. Because a lot of flowers in this game Rain, that have to do face. with moon adjacent people are like lilies. Shine down. Inazuma shines eternal. <laughs> like the rainbow rose looks like a fucking lily. There is no escape. <laughs> it's also not the original rainbow rose. Time to act. Which kind of reminds me of the Sumeru rose, which isn't actually a rose. And also the Padisara, which also isn't the real Padisara. It's just a recreation that Ruka Devada made, but she could never get the right color of purple or shade of purple. Because it was based on guess who? The fucking goddess of flowers. A Seelie. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Yeah, they remind me of Lily of the Valley. Interesting. My dog is my son. So true. Oh my goodness. Aren't bells their own kind of flower? I, I have... Y'all, I have no knowledge of flower. So, I don't know. You, you would know way more about it than me. And of course, purple is a royal color. Yep. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Do I have Nuvilet? Do I have Nuvilet? I have all the fathers in this game. I have all the fathers. I got Risley. And I got Zhongli. I got Nuvilet. And we're about to get another father. I got all of them. The mighty be humble. Yeah. I also have Farina, but she's not built. I need to do that at some point. I'm pretty sure. Okay, looking at. I, I have enough rainbow roses for Arlecchino. Pretty sure I do. Oh, crap. I should have been farming this every week. Oh, no. Oh no, we are not ready. <laughs> We're not ready for anything. Okay, well, I have like a lot of order stuff. Well, a decent amount of order stuff. That should be okay, right? Right? <laughs> okay. I'm in the wrong page, I think, for the rainbow roses. Here we go. Yep, I got 282 of them. See, yeah, this is lilies. This is a lily. More akin to lilies. It's really sus. You know what else is a lily flower? The fucking Cecilia. You know what that flower has to do with? Venti and Istaroth. Isn't it sus how all of these things keep coming together? Whoa, my comments like went way, way far back. Coughs at the center. Oh my goodness. So will you pull Varka in the future? Oh, <laughs> I have specifically been, be I've been waiting for him for a long time. He will be pulled for, I don't care if he's useless, which he shouldn't be because they've been propping him up as this super powerful dude. But yes, I will. What? Did I miss a... 
Oh my god, I did miss a Hydroculus. I thought I got all of them. All right, well, here we go. Now how the fuck do I get into the jellyfish? I forgot how to do this, y'all. How do I do this? Oh, okay. That was easy. I'm distracted by the or the gorgeous man near Villette. Yes, he is. He is a very, very gorgeous man. Oh, and I guess that's another fucking important flower. The freaking actually all of the flowers in Fontaine are important because the Pluie Lotus and then Marcotte are both a part of the Princess Marcotte tale. And Lotus is also, guess who fucking has to deal with lotuses? Ruka Devada, Nikita, and you guessed it, the fucking goddess of flowers. Freaking lotuses. Lotuses and lilies are fucking, ugh. The, the flowers in this game, goddammit. Flowers in this game. Do you think it's interesting that the Fatui voice lines are placed in order of their rankings? for child and Skara, and Varka is between Capitano and the Tsaritsa. Why, Hoyo? Oh, that's interesting. So how's Sun and Moon Part 2 going? Well, okay, let me tell you a couple of things. So on my Twitter, when I... Actually, we can look at that now since we have nothing else to do. Um, I debuted or teased what I was going to talk about for part two well not just part two but like a whole bunch of my future content let's see so hold on let me let me switch this over go away Nugulet. i love you though all right are so this was the first thing I teased. The pride of I quoted A Legend of Sword, which is going to be very important, Lost something I'm going to mention. Home. This is the next theory that I'm doing, by the way. Bandits are either samurai who have grown weary of the warrior's way or farmers fighting to stay alive. But when war ends and peace is restored, the source of their power evaporates. Like mayflies, they disappear as quickly as they came. I wonder if people know what I'm talking about with this. And then I posted... Two pictures of, well, presumably Conria on the left. Presumably, maybe, might be. And then the doorway to Conria. But I also said birds who have forgotten how to fly, which is interesting because there was conversations about that in Arlequino's thing. Wolves of the icy wasteland, blind children stumbling in the dark on the bones of the serpent who nearly destroyed the world once, perhaps twice. What betrayal do you stand accused of? What wicked god has made fathers and sons fight one another over carefully constructed lies? Part 1.99 Final Mix. By the way, it's not called this anymore. It's called... Well... It's called Part 2. The Prologue. So Part 2... Because I realized that this Conria video is gonna cross over a lot with moon sister stuff i just said you know what plus this has a lot to do with the primordial one and stuff so it's too important to just not call a numbered title so i've decided that part two will be three different videos starting with this one this one's about conria and celestia and delves into the sustainer part two like I call it the interlude, will focus more on the sustainer and her connections with Celestia and a whole bunch of other things. And then part three, well, it will finish off the part two of part, the it's the third part of part two. It's not part three, but it's the third part of part two. So it's going to be the finale. And it's going to talk about 
I see this stuff. I'm not going to say anything about it, but maybe you can guess what's going to be talked about from these images. I believe I will continue to take pride in fulfilling my duties. Is it annoying to have to keep adding newly introduced info into your already established theories? Yes, but it's good. It's good because most of the time and the majority for most of these videos, I don't have to change anything necessarily. But yeah, it is kind of annoying to have to add stuff just because it gives us more context. Also, it gives names to certain things. Like when I first started writing this theory for part two, we didn't have the name for Descenders. So I had to change water a lot of like my terminology for things. Water um, so things like that. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, but has an it's fine. Taste. In Inazuma, the water Can't wait for Ramuria to ruin the part two series. Oh my goodness. It's not going to ruin it. Water, meanwhile, has a rich it's going to add more context, maybe. Profile, Have I read Oseki no Kuni? What is that? To fully appreciate I thought you were going to name it part 1.999 remix per the Kingdom Hearts tradition. See, I was gonna, but then I changed it. But then I changed it. So yeah, this one is, this, this part was supposed to be just the original part two and this part as well, but this, these subjects Melusine's were too long. So I split them originally into two different parts be sure to and then I decided to add this one no to make it three parts. Get it? Three moon sisters. So three parts for part two. I love it. It's a manga. Interesting. I'll check it out. Other names are Maybell's, Our Lady's Tears, and Mary's Tears. Oh, for flowers. Dory uses lotuses and she is pink, so she's the goddess of... <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Land of the Lustrous is the English title, I think. It's a manga. Many oh, okay. To the discerning Interesting. Mondstadt's water is crisp oh, and this is what I wanted to mention earlier when we were talking Mule about this shit. Aftertaste. Not this shit. In the animated Zuma, teaser. The water possesses a depth of um, unlike any other. Sumeru's water here has a rich and complex. Shut up, Nuvalet. I love you, but shut up. Be quiet. I love you so much, but shut the fuck up. Okay. The mother stuff right here. So the character archetype that the previous knave is, is something called Frau Welt, which is a German term. It refers to a woman who looks pretty in the front or looks pretty from the back, but is hideous from the front. So basically a duplicitous person, woman in this case, who looks beautiful, but is actually ugly on the inside. And this particular thing has been mentioned specifically with um, Fischl. I believe one of the chapters, it's not out yet. I don't even know if they're going to release it, but it's called Fra Farewell Frau Welt or something. I think it was mentioned in Flowers for Princess Fischl. But basically the term accurately describes what she is, what this lady is, but also what, what the sustainer of heavenly principles likely is. She is a Frau Welt. She, she is, she is a Frau Welt. Official lore. Oh, hi, Ruse. Welcome to the stream if you haven't been here already. Yes, you heard Fischl. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's mentioned in like this question, questionnaire thingy. He mentions farewell. Yeah, yeah, right here. Mr. Nine, you mentioned in farewell, farewell, Fra Velt, that you were suffering from hair loss. <laughs> well, poor Mr. Nine. But yes, Fra Welt is German for Lady World. She's an allegorical figure rep representing the, de the deceptive appearance of worldly things. Seen from the front, she is a beautiful and attractive woman. However, her back is horrid filled with pus and covered with vermin oh, okay so i had it flipped it's her front that's beautiful and her back that's ugly and nasty hello unknown you used to watch my videos hi welcome 
Or welcome back, I guess. What's up, Ruse? Water comes in many, many flavors to the discerning palette. Monstat's water is crisp and pure. Oh my gosh. Fucking Nouvellet. I love you, but your water... I don't care about what water tastes like. But yes. Yes, this is all of what I've teased. So on the list, this is in the queue. We've got a Conria video. It's going to talk about Conria's relationship with Celestia, Ermin and Nibelung's relationships, what they have to do with the Descenders, and more. And I posted a picture of Andreas, Orobashi, Celestia, presumably, and then this. I'm not going to tell you what this is a picture of, but maybe you can find out what it is. Then we're going to talk about part two. Do you guys remember what this is from? If you've seen this animated short, it has to do with Honkai Impact. Oh, you've been lurking for like 20 min minutes, but you couldn't resist the official talk. <laughs> oh, I got you. No, official's interesting. Then there's that, the Crimson Moon, and then there's A, who has a whole bunch of Crimson Moon shit going on with her. Ooh, and then what's that? Oh, no. Oh, God, Kiana. Oh, yeah, this animated short basically told us everything we need to know about her. It told us everything we need to know about her. Then there's this stuff, which is going to cover this lady. And also this lady, if you guys remember what that's from. And then the next one, part three, is about Istaroth. And I get to talk about this. If you guys remember, I talked a little bit about this when we played through Fischl Story like five months ago. And this. Because if you realize this, these two are like at the center of everything. Otto and um, Colin. <laughs> Look at that. He, he's wearing an eye and she's wearing an eight-pointed star. I wonder if those have anything to do with Genshin. Yeah, Otto messes up everything in every universe. And then this is also part of the Istaroth thing. Here's Nahida in her little tree. Here's the birdie from that one thing from Mona's thingy. There's Farina disappearing. And then there's a mother hugging her child. Then we're going to talk about Dane. And then we're going to talk about Venti. So that's on, the, that's on the list. Please look forward to it. Damn, I miss you. I miss you more. Hey, who, so who is Otto and Genshin? Uh, like a bunch of characters. You could argue Dottore is, Deshret, probably Remus. You could argue Piero is in some way um, based on Otto Apocalypse, based on like their fool connections and everything like that. Um, who else? God, there's so there's a lot actually. Uh, Kave, you could argue. Um, I'm blanking, y'all. Danesliff. Oh my God, Danesliff. Obviously, holy shit. Bethany, you're two hours late. Well, art where I like where my computer just blipped. So don't worry about it. But yeah, there's like a ton of, there's a ton of auto apocalypse XPs in this freaking game. And then if you consider, there's a ton of Colin XPs as well. Like Ruka Devada. Probably the goddess of flowers, like definitely the goddess of flowers and a whole bunch of other things. What did you miss? Well, you missed us talking about Arlequino and Conria and how Conria probably was making or finding descenders for Celestia.
That's that's what I'm thinking right now. I think they were I think they were in cahoots. Do I think all of them were a part of this? AKA all of Conria? Maybe not. Maybe it was just Ermin and like a few others, but I don't know. There's some sus things going on. Cause Celestia has a lot to gain from getting descenders into the world. They literally help the world function from what it seems like. Onion, are you going to watch, watch the, se the special program? Do you guys want to go through that? Oh, that's not the special program. I mean, like, what else did they Both talk about? The I can't okay, remember. Okay, okay, first, I, I want to hear it straight from y'all. What kind of person do you think the knave is? Oh, no. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling a lot of pressure right now. <laughs> this is giving me all sorts of deja vu. <laughs> um, I guess I would like to. Sure, Archon we can quest, do that. Lilupar did mention Traveler really looked like her master King Deshra. Does that mean? Her way of speaking yeah. was incredibly refined. She and did polite, mention that. She was also incredibly She also said he looked like her husband. <laughs> I mean, or reminded her Karina of her husband. Not or to Maz. recognize her and talked about having nightmares. I totally get where she was coming from, mm. but. That's just an outsider's point of view, right? What is the knave like as a parent? I think Damon is probably the best oh. person to answer that question. <laughs> okay, take it away. Okay, you were hoping that I would be the weakest link? Hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she's a very strict father. Okay. Uh are these angel wings or are these just like bird wings? What is this? Oh. <laughs> or is that her hair? Um, hmm. No, that's not All her right. hair. It sounds like she gives everyone an intimidating impression. Yeah, but I think Arlequino loves all Have we the talked about Notlan people having dragon companions? For no reason, I briefly mentioned it, feel a lot of pressure but we didn't talk specifically about it. By her stern attitude. It's Do you think Conria really had a god? In yes. An organization like the Fatui, these kids actually need I think that... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe once upon a time, the founders did. Here's the thing. <clears throat> because I think they're more alike. I think they're more like the gods in terms of what they are. See, this conversation is kind of complicated, especially with Perrin Harry, because Perrin Harry implied that the curse of the wilderness and the curse of immortality, specifically the curse of the wilderness, has to do with betraying your god in some fashion. At least that's what it implies, but Conrian never had a god. So the pure blooded Conrians, they can't get the curse of the wilderness. They did, however, get the Curse of Immortality, which slowly erodes them over time, which always made me wonder. It, it's just the, the big question is what makes Conrians different from everybody else, because it's clear there's something different. And if we go off of Perrin Harry, then the fact that they didn't get the Curse of the Wilderness means they didn't have a god. But I don't think that's entirely true. Again, I think they were working in tandem with Celestia. They may have not worshipped. But I think they were doing stuff for Celestia. Which would make sense as well because Conria's name literally means traitor to the wind or traitor of the wind. And we do know that one of the shades was the thousand winds of time. So, I mean, you can't be a traitor to something if you weren't first an ally, right? But anyway. Need to be more mature, tough. Her wing, fallen angel vibes. True. Their age, you know. Mm, that's actually kind of sad, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Conria were dragons, oh, maybe. Her, this name. Isn't Ermin considered one? Why are they this? Wait, considered name? what? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Are you trying to say that she treats the kids like that because she was traumatized? Been playing Final Ooh, Fantasy too, so I see okay, so much Sephiroth. That's very sharp of you, <laughs> oh, no. but let's keep our Lakino secrets hidden for just a little bit longer. Okay. okay. Dave's Ori um, mentioned though. Question, Isn't that Jong Lee's name? Why did the children call her father? 
Ah, uh, well, if you're curious about Arlequino's past, then you'll have to find your answer. Heaven in might the be game. the Dragon King Nebulon. That quest, would be interesting. Ignis Purgatorius will be released with version 4.6. Now, oh yeah, she does have wings in her transformation, doesn't experience she? Experience by saying too much about her quest, okay? But. I do hope that travelers will be able to appreciate Arlequino's unique charm after they've experienced her entire story. <laughs> yeah. Version 4.6 will also introduce a new feature, the focused experience mm -hmm. mode. Now, if you use the feature while playing Arlequino's story quest, then it will minimize the okay, number so of times this... that you'll be inter- So yeah, this is like what we were talking about earlier about Fremine some weird ley line shenanigans happening and that this child is probably part of his fucking imagination. The child who doesn't exist is what the name of this quest is called. That could obviously just mean that he's hiding her, whoever he's, well, whoever this child is. But it could also mean that she just literally is not real, which is interesting. Since it seems they are doing post-colonial, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that, Latum, Latam, Africa, for Natlan, I guess the dragon and people are an allegory for the mixing of Criolos and Originaries. Possibly, yeah. But that's, that's interesting, though, if that's the case. Fremenet's event was foreshadowing this. Yeah, we'll maybe the number of times that you'll be interrupted by characters or quest locations. Because that lady was hallucinating her quests. son so as Thalxi, right? This mode will help travelers have a better story experience, cool. you know. Nice. But when That's we put right. on the helmet, we and could the see future, the boy. This function will become available for Even though he wasn't quests. really there, right? Besides the story quest, I'm also looking forward to hearing the Knave's voiceover lines because Aaron's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll finally be able to hear what she thinks about the other Harbingers, too. Yes, I selfishly also think that will be cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next, let's take a look at Arlequino's elegant yet deadly fighting style. Ooh. <laughs> Intrigue! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Staring into my eyes is ill-advised. I can't promise you'll like what you see. Transfixed! I wonder if that has any meaning behind I'll fuck you up if you look at me the wrong way, you know what I mean? Like, what if there's like, where you like shouldn't look at her eyes? This is ill-advised. For a I long period of time. Like what you see. Transfixed! Also that throne thing I saw people saying it was very reminiscent of the Gnostic chorus with the princess sitting on the throne. And yes, yes it is. Why is she glitching? Again, I'm thinking it's forbidden knowledge stuff because forbidden knowledge kind of is a sort of glitch in the world of Tevet. And her power may have something to do with forbidden knowledge. <laughs> I like how she glides. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, she's very elegant. Like that was a perfect descriptor. Like elegant but deadly. Like a yes, like a ballerina of death. Yes. I know. Yeah. I can't she wait for her. She's so good. So effortless. She's gonna be so I good. Know, right? Yes. All right. Well, if we're going to talk about Arlequino's combat abilities, then we're gonna have to talk about the bond of life mechanic. Uh, you might have been a victim to it while you were. Oh yeah, her like lines about the harbingers are gonna be so. Good. Does anyone still remember what a bond of life is? Uh, are you going to be teaching us about her abilities? Guys, you're too loud. Pipe oh. down. <laughs> <laughs> Mask of Red Death or of say. the Red Death. I Wait, think that's what I, I think somebody was mentioning earlier in the stream as well. When you have a bond of life active, it'll absorb any healing that you Because this lady's got a lot of so Grim Reaper vibes. can't regain HP until the bond of life value has mm -hmm. been healed. Yeah. Yes, right? very good student. It's also interesting <laughs> because the Crimson Moon is like a precursor for destruction. Of her health bar, her like it appeared in the desert, it appeared in Conria. It seems like it just is an ill omen which can't be of death, by other which makes sense. Infusions. And while she's in this state, her normal attacks will consume a portion of her current bond Don't stare into the abyss too long as it stares back type of thing. Oh, yeah. Cool down on good catch. I didn't think skill. about that. Yeah. Whoa, Just whoa, like that. Whoa, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. A it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so you're saying that she'll deal more damage with her normal attack when her bond of life is higher? <laughs> Put simply, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I wait want her to second. dump on Chaka <laughs> no, just for it. the lulls. Wait, so oh, she probably will. Arlequino can give herself a bond of life, right? 
Yeah, uh, I, I think so. I mean, otherwise she'd have to chase down enemies. Also, someone mentioned why or how she could have <laughs> wandered. That, she could have wander in her memories <laughs> when she became that. the knave. Uh, and that okay, so to our elemental skill, our Lakino skill doesn't just damage. We talked about enemies, this earlier, but personally, I don't think. Directive to I think the animation might have just will damage them periodically. Been something she uses for the players, not necessarily. Burst, she'll absorb you know, from our Lakino's perspective, this they might have just been showing us to obtain a bond things of as they happened. The number of directives that she absorbed. So don't worry, Matt. But at the same oh, time, there might have been a reason as to why they showed specifically okay, Arlequino, um, until her bond of Piero, Scaramouche, so La Senora, and Capitano in the scene. Well, there may be a specific reason Arlequino's for it. Elemental burst will reset but I don't think it was a memory. I don't think. And I don't think it's indicative of her attack and her current bond of life. Oh, okay. Also, Thanks to one of her talents, her well, immunity to Ermansoul rewrites. Bonus At least I'm not convinced damage, yet. I'm not saying it's not possible, but other than the healing provided by her burst. Oh, so I, that seems like she's. But I want to look at it forever. Me too, nightmare. Actually, she's like she needs. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's enchanting. Kind of a savage. I mean, <laughs> um, right. So Arlequino. Oh my God, I love how he said that. She's kind of a she savage. Like, attack. duh. Like, ooh, that looks perfect for scaring her enemies. Yes. Yeah, and for putting some serious pressure on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had to show the coat drip uh -huh. for Scar oh, and Signora. That's true too. That may be the only reason they fucking did that. Let's do it. So exciting. Right. During the first phase. Wait, of hold on. Six, you guys Hang on. Uh huh. Oh, it's about time to introduce the event wishes. And Is that an accident? There's another one back there. Is that another Arlecchino in the background? <laughs> or is that something else? Am I going crazy? Version 4.6. No, it looks like her. Is that like a glitch? <laughs> oh my gosh, the things my mind focuses on. <laughs> <laughs> During the first phase of version 4.6, Arlecchino, the knave, and Linny will both enjoy a drop rate boost. The all new five star polearm crimson. Oh moon my gosh, I cannot wait for this freaking weapon to come also, out. The wanderer and Baiju will return in the second phase. So, be so sure like I'm saying, y'all, this right here is for a reason. All of this is ermine stuff, all of it. Arlecchino, this entire patch, Remuria, the choices and the characters that they're bringing back. It's all ermine stuff. It's all ermine stuff. I promise you. The Wanderer has stuff to do with King Ermine. Baiju does because snakes are dragons. This dude's in a contract with a snake. It could be a parallel to somebody that made a contract with a dragon and entered into a symbiotic relationship where their lives are shared, aka Ermine and Nibelung now sharing one vessel and are collectively known as the Sinner. Buys you because snakes. Oh also, God. his story quest revolved around getting rid of God remains, BT dubs, and about how how God remains can remotely affect people. So, like, if you take a piece of a God remain and you have it with you, it's affecting you. But if you get rid of the mother load, then it like gets rid of the rest of them. And I think that might be how the abyss works and how the sinner works. Like, if you get rid of the source, it just blows everything else. Baizu, Baizu is them trolling, trolling it feels like. That's I promise so you it's not them trolling, I okay, promise you. So Aaron just go with my brain rot. Do you have any other just news you'd like to share? Rot. Actually, I do. Let's discuss the new week. Yeah, his story quest is actually so really good. Right. I enjoyed it. We were just talking about how the knave shows different faces to her family members. I want Arlequino, but you're so close to C6 Wanderer. Oh. Circumstances, she well, will reveal another side. Maybe you'll get Wanderer super early, <laughs> and then right. you can spend the Are rest you of your primos on Arlequino. Yes! Y'all, this boss fight's about to be fucking hard. Wait a minute. What are those? Is that part of her ability? 
What what are these? Am I going crazy? Did I miss something from earlier? No, they just move around. They're angels, they're little fairies. Yeah, the music is great too. Baiju is pantalone, yeah, probably. <laughs> they look really similar, and I feel like that's for a reason. <laughs> I'll probably do a theory on it later. Spirits of the chi oh my god, that is depressing. Spirits of the children? Do you think we might get a second part of Child Story Quest? We just fucking got it in the freaking Archon Quest. You know what? I'm gonna say yes, Truck Coon, because for whatever reason, Hoyoverse really likes Child. <laughs> I, it's, I'm not saying I don't like Child because I do. But, like, they keep involving him in super important shit for whatever reason. On that note, I'm going to have to find it and link it to people, but I saw this really good thread that I cannot remember where I, who it was about child's connections with the god of light and the sun, Apollo, and it's really interesting. I'm going to have to find it and, like, link it to people. Because it was really good. He's Asuka XB from Evangelion. Of course Hoyo likes him. Oh. See, I... I haven't watched Evangelion to this day. I probably need to. So pretty. Pretty burning angel wings. You know what it also is? She reminds me of the Homa. Staff of Homa, because Homa, the Staff of Homa also is purification, purifying flames. But Homa's also a reference to a bird. A bird that specifically, by the way, bestows kingship upon people. And is also totally has to do with fucking Isteroth. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway. It will blow your mind making the Genshin connections while watching it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to set aside some time. Isn't it because his name was Ajax? Oh, child? Speaking of... Yeah, <sighs> there's a lot I could say about child. There's just a lot. And yes, I think that may have something to do with the Apollo connections. Staff of Homa second BIS for Arlequino confirmed. Oh. Well, is it her best in slot? Her second best in slot? Wow. Not even Linny and Fremine have seen this side of her before. Mm. So the Knave is accepting challengers now? Wait, sorry. Mm -hmm. This was also something I noticed. Note how they say not even Linny and Fremine have seen this side of her before. So Lynette has seen this side of her before? When? When? Was it when Arlequino like saved her from those? Weren't they about to be like sold into child slavery or something? Or am I mixing that lore up? Linny and Lynette. They were like on the street. Some magician dude helped them and taught them magic. But weren't they like going to be sold or something? Yeah, like maybe when she saved him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's scary. <laughs> she must have been really pissed that day. Also, is this is this a Nokian script right here? That says something. That is like, what is this? Somebody translate this. Unless I'm crazy and that says nothing. Wow. Not even yeah, I'm crazy. That says Lenny nothing. That was just Fremine embers. Seen this side of her before. Mm. So Ignore me. Challengers now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. She's so elegant, but also super duper dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> they were in a noble's house, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, so that did happen. I didn't just imagine that. The badassitude. <laughs> It's not so simple to see the knave's other side. She'll appear normally at first, as if she were 
giving you an ordinary training lesson waiting to counter your attacks. Yeah, it seems like she'll dodge all of our attacks like a phantom if we're out of her immediate range. Mm. Yeah, it feels like, like she's a implying that we're all in the palm of her hand. <laughs> I mean, you guys know what her personality's like. She doesn't want her children <laughs> crying or running away from conflict. Instead, she hopes that they'll be able to take the initiative, even if their opponent is their own father. The so this is like a test, right? Mercy, so For Lenny, Lynette, and to be too forgiving to them. Fremenet. If you do not repay the blood debt directives the knave applies And there's that to, stupid little spirit again. Y'all saw that, right? Advanced. But it was sitting if on a you rock. To outheal the bond of life, the knave will reward you. So Arla's trailer, where the girl dies, is similar to where Arlie saved is. Lynette. Yeah. Don't the oh, maybe. On Onion C script everywhere now. The brain <laughs> rot is strong, yes, basically. <laughs> Oh my god. Cinder of two worlds total flames. Control of her prey while she watches them struggle and closes the distance. Mm -hmm. It's kind of creepy being the hunted one for once. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. that's really dumb. I, I was... stop the introduction here <laughs> for once. I don't know why this is so stupid to me, but his little cat. Do you see this? What is this cat's name? His little cat has become the little fucking butterfly thingy, whatever it is. Yeah. Spider, yes, crab, it. whatever it is. Oh my gosh, it's like she has total control of her You know what? It kind of looks like a praying mantis a little bit. The way her wings just like folded in a little bit. So neither can she afford to be too forgiving to them. Which is interesting because if praying mantises kind of have sight like hands. All her attacks against you will be the advanced. cat flying. But the cat is the boss. If you manage to outheal the bond of life, the knave will reward <laughs> you for repaying this blood debt, and your charged attacks against her will be enhanced. Ah. Don't the bone wings on her back look? Like I think Child is gonna have a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff. Shame I don't. I just don't like him. His design and personality. Oh gosh, hey, girly. Like totally Maybe you'll like him when Snezhnaya rolls around, and we get to see him interact with more of his family. <laughs> oh, it's kind of. Creepy being the hunted one for once. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I think we should stop the introduction. Yeah, why here. are them little fairy Let's thingies just, just floating around? The There's like one the up there. Results. There's one there. Wait, so I know that many travelers will be wondering about this. Mm. The Nave's boss form is tied to her story quest. Mm -hmm. Normally, players would have to progress the story to a certain point in order to participate. I said it before. In the this challenge. fight looks like a but Hollow Knight boss. I've never a played Hollow Knight. Challenge feature for weekly Trounce domain bosses. Yeah. Lenny's cat is called a Grin Malkin cat. Rank in a Grin Malkin hat. Able to challenge oh. her directly by going to the Adventurer Handbook. Going for whatever to reason, that reminds me of like a Cheshire-like cat. And pressing quick I'm challenge. still waiting for the traveler cool. to use their so, hidden nice OP power. To the battle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm looking yeah, forward we'll to see. that. Hopefully <laughs> that they use really it soon. That is valuable information to have. And it also looks like it's Can my someone turn make to fan some art news. of it, please? Two new artifact sets will become The Arlequino domain is possibly the area where Clervy was killed. Maybe. Travelers to me, it looked like... Them it looked kind of like control of her where... Where Arlequino killed Mama. You know what I mean? But it could all, it could be it could be where Clervy died. Then again, those those places it may have happened in the same place to be honest, or like in a similar area. And here's the new artifacts. I can't wait. I fucking can't wait. So looks like it's my turn to oh, deliver it's some have news. some good lore. Two new artifact sets will become available in version four point six. Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy and Unfinished Reverie. Travelers who are interested in them should stay tuned for more information. Cool. Oh, Pretty sure it was inspired finished. by the Cheshire okay. Cat, Wait, which would make sense. It was so short. It wasn't enough for me. <laughs> yeah, give us more. Okay, okay. I actually do have other news. Lenny to was share. the Mad Hatter Ooh. and Lynette the Cheshire Ooh. Cat. Yes, 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 yes. That would make sense. In version 4.6, Sumeria what does that make Arlequino? An unsolved mystery. Ooh. And for some reason, Sino's gotten mixed up in it. Hey, I'm telling y'all, it's that. important that they're doing Sino right now and that we're getting possibly some oh, Deshret lore. Right. <laughs> but also just Sino in well, general, Sino who has to do to with wolves, and wolves are really interesting when it comes in to the, the moon. Has a very unique identity, and the two of them share a close connection. Uh, and there's a lot of similarities with Andreas well. and right. possibly King Earth. And I'll explain and why. The situation gets too complicated. Yes. These are all very good guesses. <laughs> oh, the Red Queen. I'll offer that you would one make sense. That you probably wouldn't be able to guess otherwise. A mysterious youngster with connections to the mystery will make his debut during the case. 
Hmm. And Sino any thoughts on Sethos? He's adorable. Only show up for food. That's all I have. Tynari I don't know too much about him, him though. And like I, we know nothing. We know nothing. When he's in a pinch. So, yeah, but he looks pretty cool. Know more about what happens in I just case, realized we didn't sure watch the Sino's fucking trailer for 4.6, which we'll do two. in a second. Travelers can venture to Sumeru and investigate the secrets lurking underneath the sands. In due time, of course. <laughs> Sarah, you totally delivered. That was great news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of great news, Ooh. I think Damon also has wait. some important information wait, to share. Wait, 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 wait. <gasps> really? Wait, yes. wait, wait. What are we wait. waiting for? We've just presented but who's Alice? Too Us? Much information too quickly. C can, we, can we take a break, please, so we can digest <laughs> all of it, please? Farina might please. be Alice. He can't keep getting away I with this. <laughs> But no, no, I think we are right. also Alice too because Let's we're literally in a fucking dream world, possibly. We continue introducing the we're the content. aliens to this world, and so was Alice to Wonderland. <laughs> so, so yeah, that would make sense if we're Alice. <laughs> Sethos is Electro, right? His vision on his hip, if you look close enough. We'll have to take a look when he gets here. Up. Oh. Stupid redemption right. code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Finally, Petricor. Oh yeah, we need to read the to description of those finches. Right? I remember someone mentioned yeah, it earlier. We're focused on the wrong thing here. This is where the kingdom of Remuria's remains lay at rest. Y'all, this so is gonna be so good. Was such a glorious and prosperous nation, really. Mm. Oh, well, now that you say that, I mean, this see, there's that stupid cat. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a neat trick. <clears throat> anyway. I promise you, this cat has <laughs> this something to do with Fortuna. A talking cat. <sighs> with its guidance, we will be able it's, to it's see the It's a stupid, magical, all-white cat. What? Oh my God! <laughs> Anything for a talking cat. <laughs> <laughs> As Aaron mentioned at the beginning of the program, King Remus composed a symphony, one with wondrous power that grants the wishes of the human souls dwelling within. Yes, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm. I, oh yeah, Arlequina's not gonna so go not all out on her kids. Okay. I will explain it in a few words. <laughs> She's so just testing him. Learn about the symphony by going on an adventure. But by that logic, do you think that? Mother was going itself, as hard as she could have on Arlequino. With the cat, the kingdom's remnants slumber in the depths where the sunlight can't reach. Because she wanted the her to replace her. Deep seas. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. What's with so the whale? You'll be able to obtain powers relating to the symphony, which will help you explore the lost realm of Remuria. I'm You'll really excited that this, is, this has a lot to do with music because music means well, more so Moon Sister stuff in my opinion interact with specific and possible venti crumbs. You know, that might be useful for solving puzzles during your adventure. Totally. Ooh. Meanwhile, a forgotten statue sits in a recess of the faded castle, silently proclaiming the immortality and glory of a great civilization. It awaits a warrior who would dare challenge the This is a cool looking boss, BT dubs. Oh yeah, that's right. The statue of marble and brass. Ooh, I like this chandelier. I hope we can get it for all sorts our little of materials teapots. if you manage to beat it in a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so hyped for it. <laughs> Me oh too. my gosh, yes. And Damon, you did such a great yes, job with introducing it. That was great. great. That was great, Damon. Wait, but real quick, quick question. Yeah. How do we even Lenny's get Lenny's talent description has some cat island. lore. That Ooh. is a great question. I Travelers think when Mother was going to die, then yes, at that point, she probably would have fought back with full strength. She looked legit freedom. surprised. We'll yeah. automatically unlock a teleport waypoint in the village of Petricor. Hopefully this helps travelers with exploring Everything is foreshadowing. We had a cat event in 4.5, right. Many new areas and Paimon? Paimon likes cats, cool. or cats <laughs> right, like Paimon. That's all the information that we have about Fontaine for now. And now, outside the moon of the region, stuff is going oh on. God. It seems like a new style of rock and roll is getting popular in Inazuma. <gasps> rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's all take a short break before we get into the next section. Take a look at today's second redemption code. Yeah. Right. But you'll arrive. Yeah, what is with this fucking whale? <laughs> It looks like it's tied down and we're going to have to free it. But also, if you notice, then again, we don't know which part this is from, but this is where the kingdom we're of is following the rest. whale. So how big was such a here? So is this really? after we free it? Well, now that you say that, and I the mean, cat is here. A whole lot bigger. Now that's a neat trick. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> this is where we'll meet. Sethos is adorable, BT Dubs. Though his eyes are very bright. That's not a bad thing, but...
It's a dragon, I guess. What you mean? That whale has got to be Sila. Skill. How do you pronounce that? Mystery. Okay. Well, hmm. The whale is a dragon. Okay. Well, hmm. I mean. That would make sense, so how, how big was but such a only because I think, nation, really? um, kind of in a roundabout way, S the last whale we just had was a star beast from beyond, and star beasts have been likened to Aether and Lumine, like the Travelers, but the Travelers have also been compared to dragons before. Like, if you remember in Fischl's Domain, um, what's it called? The Twilight Theater production thingy that you can do. One of the things that the uh, director says at the end of it is that you're like the dragon in the story. So there's a lot of overlap between dragons and travelers and then star beasts. And the last star beast we got was a whale. So yeah, I, I'm sure the dragon is a whale. I guess, but that would be so fucking weird. Now that's a neat trick. <clears throat> I want an actual <laughs> dragon. This is where we'll meet human souls dwelling within. Yes, I'm. Oh, there's the whale again. Getting it. I'm. So is it just going to be following I'm, us I'm around this entire so time, or are we going to okay. be following I will it? it? In a few words, <laughs> so you'll just have to learn about the symphony by going on an adventure with this little cat. <sighs> I'll avoid spoiling the adventure itself, but you'll arrive at the Remoria. And the and the waypoint for Petricor is going to be immediately unlocked, right? So I'm wondering how this entire quest will start. If you think about um the Chenyu Vale that just happened, we also I think they also unlocked the waypoint for that too, didn't they? Well, when we immediately got there, we got dragged into a realm of consciousness. Slash teapot or adeptal abode whatever they're the same fucking thing as realms of consciousness i don't care so i'm wondering how this one is gonna start are we just gonna get is the cat gonna pop up and be like hey reach. you'll meet a dragon come to remuria with me the whale became a stalker oh my gosh all other dragons are based on siege creatures this is also true they are so that would make sense I think they mention a dragon. I don't think they say that the whale is said dragon or the dragon's name. Oh. Hello, Kamin. Welcome to the stream. It's nice to see you too. I don't want to be forced into the quest again. I like starting them when I want to. Yeah, for me, like for somebody who... <laughs> is recording this shit it is kind of jarring to be immediately pulled into stuff because <laughs> it's like wait i'm not ready yet now i have to get out my recording and my recording stuff why are we watching the redemption code Max, thing would you like to tell us more about ah, the iridescent tour how do you guys what do you guys Padre. think of this so i got a question does everyone still remember divorce because they're going on the music theme obviously and then we get he to see marco meatball again play dvorak that's right yeah both hutao and shinyan perform which will be nice that's right and this time it's an epic we get to see fucking hazo oh my god <laughs> and oh my gosh and even and the, the tanukis are even involved really that's cute oh yeah no the way he says iridescent arataki rocking for life toward the force of awesomeness really gives up feeling of rock and roll wow. <laughs> and the theme of this yeah like randomly starting the quest is like mildly annoying but brave puppy who saved the it lives is what of it is countless other creatures on the battlefield you know what this is a random this is on a random note but you know sangonomiya's little symbol for whatever reason, it reminds me of the demon symbol for Paimon, just low-key, just a little bit. Not really. But it low-key reminded me of that. Aww, Don't so worry cute. about that, ignore that. Really I love Ito, but Shinyan should have yeah, been here too. too. Really oh my god, you're right. I mean, she might pop up, right? But she's not on the cover spirit. art, which is unfortunate. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Ito himself will personally be performing mm. on the big stage. <gasps> what? 
Whoa, yeah, she should have been here. That's gonna be awesome. Nice. Yes, it will be. And here's more exclusive news for you. Dvorak will be This music away event a brand isn't random though. It suggests some lore for Inazuma, which is good. I want dragon lore. lore. Like so I want electro dragon lore, so good. Life, or especially if you enjoy playing music in the game, be sure to check it out. I'm looking forward to seeing more amazing performances from all the great musicians out there. Are you now? Well, since you're so excited. Yeah, it makes sense for them to launch a music event alongside Romuria. For life tour to force of awesomeness. Yeah, I'll try to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a story about a brave puppy and we get a free festival. Goro, please. Number oh, that is that is Extreme cute. Carnival Ensemble. We can practice getting into the flow with some rhythm games while the stage is still coming together. Wow, those keys look really unique. Yeah, they really are. And the second task is called the Trillion Trinket Trawl. Mm. Say that three times the fast. Trillion the Trillion Trinket Trawl. Trawl. The Trillion Trinket Trawl. The Trillion Trinket Trawl. I did it. Ooh. We can't have <laughs> a rock and music hmm. festival without a rock and venue. So travelers will be helping Dvorak spruce it Do you guys up ever think we're going to get expansions for cake, Inazuma? Right? Yeah. <laughs> or is it and like lastly, done? <laughs> we have the meeting of Because there's only so many islands. But then again, Japan has band, like so 8,000 islands or something, right? They could us. make more Inazuma islands. Tunes, there's no reason they didn't, you know? Oh, so we'll be able to hear them sing. That is super exciting. Yeah. Yes, that's the point. Music I'm not good at rhythm games either, don't worry. It feels done, yes, but I'm like, I kind of want them to make more, especially if they're expanding the other. Literally every other region has got like and some sort of expansion. has finally arrived. Yes, I love Wind Trace, and and yeah, it can get a little tense. Well, except for well, that the new name. Well, that's kind of hard to say. The game has undergone some mechanics changes. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct. That's very intuitive of you. Yeah, you'll really. Mondstadt and Leo are the only ones that have gotten just like before. But there are a few new Well, Liyue has gotten multiple expansions. It's gotten two. Time, they'll be exiled to the surveillance. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, guy. I don't know. Now, they will be automatically the Okinawa of Inazuma. Out, that would be also, nice. Also, their friends can try to help them escape. They could do the something program. underground as well, but like in Kanemiya. Yeah. Sent to jail twice, you're permanently deleted from the game. <gasps> oh, that does sound tense and thrilling. <laughs> right? And that's yeah, like all. Inazuma feels oh, no. really small. Will have six signaling devices, and very, very isolated, obviously. From disguising or concealing themselves. The rebel's goal is to repair these devices while also avoiding. Maybe capture. you know what? At some Once point, the ruins devices, they win the match. under the sea. Oh, and rebels can work Maybe they'll rise at some point, devices. and we'll get and content there. Hunters will either need to prevent the rebels. If there are ruins in between Inazuma and everywhere else, simply eliminate their opponents. If you team up with friends, then watching these games should be a blast. <laughs> ah, she gets it. She gets it. But the next part is even more thrilling. When How do y'all feel about this new device, wind trace? The device being repaired, this is like prop hunter a little bit, right? State. What does it mean? It means it'll give it off basically is prop hunter, player in the but like in fact, now it has the same little thingies. Ooh, okay. So that means that repairing the devices will expose your location. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's these sort of unexpected risks that can be the most nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. This is going to be super interesting to play. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And DBD and Genshin. Wait, what's DBD? A rather strange commission. What do you mean? The major problem is how do you justify an expansion yeah, out of nowhere? Chef who's well, here's your justification. Oh, we have Electro Dragon stuff. Uh, so, oh yeah. Here's a new and region in Inazuma. Fine, he also wants to befriend a Chalono. Geovisha and a J Oh, Dead by Daylight. Show. There and you go. The Millennial Pearl Seahorse. It is like Dead by Daylight. Uh, you guys heard me the first time. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would react this way. Yeah, we anyway, get to cook a chef dangerous flowers. Natlon, and he started getting so Oh, Natlon lore. He thought he should toughen himself up by having his own companion. You know, just like how people from Natlon have Saurian companions. Wait, what is a Saurian? What is that? Somebody, somebody help me. By having his own companion. You know, just like how people from Natlon have Saurian companions. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is that like dragons? Are, th are they dragons? Yes, they're dragons. Gotcha. Of or like a lizard. So yes. Well, that answers that question. Wait. Did you say that he came back from Natlon? 
So like dinosaur, listen, Damon, if you dragon lizards. Okay, yep. Okay. Go check out the event <laughs> when the virgin If the electro dragon right, shows up, it would be cool to have now, a dragon versus archon fight. That would be fun. The game club. <laughs> You got it. You got Give it. us like an animated cutscene, like we should have gotten for Asia Hun and Zhong Li. It would have been nice to see those two fight. Can take on fearless difficulty. Can also talk to Maybe the anime will show it. Of negotiation strategies. So if you reduce them, it amps up the challenge difficulty, giving you the perfect opportunity to test your skills. Cool. Both active strategies and long-term strategies. Oh no, will. not one of you these can events. Active strategies at will. I'm However, horrible at your fighting. Your opponent's HP and level will change depending on the number of strategies that Ooh, you've picked. Ooh, that's cool. So yeah, so you've got to choose your favorite strategies to come out on top. Play to your strengths. Wow. Noted. And moving on, travelers should be familiar with our next event. Vibro All right, this is just the Vibro Crystal event. The TCG is <laughs> getting some new cards. Is there anything else? Really? A large oh, and then like quality the of life stuff. Oh. It's not so. Is there anything else that y'all would like to share with ooh, all the ooh, travelers ooh, who ooh. are watching? Yes. Oh, Paimon singing with a flower. Look at that. That's cute. What flower is that actually? Need to have an answer. To experience this concert, it is. Okay, let's watch the trailer. Because we never actually did that. It has been millennia since the fall of Remuria, and its history has long faded into the mists of mythology and superstition. Wait, okay, Saurian just means like lizards and reptile, but makes you think of lizardmen from Warhammer. Well, that makes me think of the Bishop people. Legends tell of how that Enjo said allegedly existed in Enconomia. There was an empire known as Remuria. Remurians believed their king Remus would bring eternal. Well, we had dragon like Runeshin in um, Sumeru. Guess where those Conrians get the ideas from? Yep, dragon. The God King's seers prophesized discord. The greatest empire. I think we will get a lot more animated shorts from now on. That would be this great. Is Fortuna. Thus did the God King derive Paimon and Ito singing would be cute. From the cycle of the seven days and winds blowing over sea and land and compose. So that's an interesting line. Prosperity to the islands of the high sea. However, the God King's seers prophesized discord. The greatest empire will face the most utter destruction. And this and is this. Fortuna. So Fortuna this is Fortuna. like fate in a way as well. Like Thus a ship fate concept. The primordial plan. Thus did the God King derive the primordial plan from the cycle of the seven days. It's this line is really interesting because Deshret in the staff of the Scarlet Sands he's like talking about the creation of the world, the creation of the sun and the three moons. And then things like weight and like a whole bunch of other stuff. And he mentions that there's like this cycle of seven that needs to be stopped. And now we're getting this deriving the primordial plan from the cycle of seven days. That feels very important. What primordial plan? What did Remus figure out? Did he figure out how the world works through music? From the cycle of the seven days and winds blowing over sea. And then it's interesting that he's doing it with music and wind. Once again, the fucking moon sisters and goddamn Isteroth. And land and composed a splendorous symphony based upon it. Yes, yeah, seven is like an established cycle. Though I'd argue it's actually nine and not seven, a cycle of nine, but that's a whole other conversation. Seven is the rule of Tevat. Seven Archons, seven Dragons, seven Gnosis, seven Days, etc. You know what's interesting? We're missing a cycle of seven. And that should have been when the Primordial One was ruling. What was the cycle of seven for that? Anybody have any guesses? Like, you could argue four of them were the Shades. Which we're also going to talk about this in my new video, but... You could argue that four of them were the Sages. Or uh, the shades, not sages. But then, what? Who are the other three? It's 
like of this cycle of seven ruled the trajectories of the stars, water, wind, whatever the fuck he said. The moon this one, which I kind of do, so I included them in that four. But it is possible that they are the last three. But then the question would be, who are the shades? If the Moon Sisters aren't shades, then who are the shades? But I feel like the Moon Sisters are three of the shades. All these numbers make me want to look up what arcane of these numbers are. That would be interesting. Speaking of music, Arlequino's theme sounds kind of like the whale fight theme. Interesting. I didn't think about that. I think the point of the primordial ones unified civilization was unifying the seven into one. No, no, because Deshret does say that there was a cycle of seven supposedly during that time period, or it should have been. He believed that the polities could escape fate's judgment and attain eternal paradise if they harmonized with his perfect symphony. But hmm. today... Welcome to the Genshin Impact version 4.6 special program! Let's take a look at the trailer! There's a, So this is once again like... The idea of music guiding people's fate. You know how there's a theory that the Moon Sisters are goddesses of fate as well in this world, and there's a lot of actual circumstantial evidence to support that. They harmonize. So the fact that he's trying to use music to escape fate, judgment, and attain fate's eternal judgment, paradise, if they is interesting. With his perfect symphony, but today welcome to the genshin impact version 4.6 special program let's take a look at the trailer primordial the four shades occasion, the second that came and the third descender i actually don't think the primordial food, one compete with is considered as part of that cycle of seven they enjoy. because <sighs> there's the seven sovereigns and then there's nibelung who may not have been a part of the Seven Sovereigns, but may have just been an eighth entity. Another parallel also is the way the Liu Qixing is set up. There's seven members of the Liu Qixing, who's the ruling body of Liu, and then there's Rex Lapis. He's not a part of that seven, but he rules over everything. So there's eight. And then there's nine, if you consider Wei Zhang, who died long before the current events, but was ruling alongside Morax at one point. So that's why I say it's probably not a cycle of seven, but it might be a cycle of nine. Right, participating in activities like that, and the feeling is mutual. After all, it's always possible certain familiar Yeah, like, so seven plus the sun the and then, like, and a moon-like figure. Around. Something has come up. And since it pertains to Cyrus and Sino, and that's actually even more interesting if you look at the Liu Qixing because great Ning Guang, the one in charge of it, has some sustainer parallels. Because you know she also has silver hair. I think she even has crimson eyes. Um, and she has her jade chamber, which is very much like participating in the plan lose a, a certain island floating in the sky she also has three secretaries that have very similar names you accept my proposal monsieur Nevelet, unless absolutely necessary i will no like super similar names almost like they're Once given cannot be rescinded. Do you have any idea what you're doing? You're hiding the very person father has been trying to find. I really didn't mean to drag anyone else into this. If father Remember, what are you doing? This, everyone involved is going to be punished. Who was that? A traitor. Sino was chosen. 
but he was not the only one. Wait, does that mean Sethos, the other one, is the other person that was chosen by Hermanubis? You'd like me to return my power? I'm really looking forward to this right of duels. The well, that would make sense. Would have been ours. I want you to become the next king of the house. Yet you seem to have Criminate, for me, is innocent of everything. I'm not saying I have he all is the answers, just an innocent But child. doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family. Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, Helen. You among us are willing to sit from a glass filled with tea. We I'll make sure it's drained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Good things come to children who do as they're told. Wait a minute. What is she talking about here? Your words paint an optimistic pitch picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. And I think New Villette said that. And then Arlequino says, I'll make sure it's strained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. I, what is that about? Your words paint an I wonder if she has something to do with why maybe the ley lines or something are wonky. You know what I mean? And she has to clean it up because it's kind of her fault. And maybe that's where this Princess Marcotte comes from and why she looks a lot like Clervy. Who knows? I have no idea though. An optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, Helen. You among us are willing to sit from a glass filled with water. We I'll make sure it's drained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Yeah, like I mean that would go well with like the ley lines and everything and getting rid of the impurities and the ley lines. I'm not quite sure. And the fact that she is, you know, the purifying fire. Good things come to children who do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along. Oh yeah, those are like spider webs, aren't Good they? Good things come to children like those who strings. do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along. There are many dangers ahead, and I for one don't intend to back down. I don't want to disobey an order from Father. So why? Why have you backed us into a corner? No demonstration of loyalty shall go unrewarded. And no sacrifice shall be in vain. Oh. They're all about to get their shit wrecked, dun, which is dun, dun. unfortunate. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah. Her Miller constellation Cruz, is cleansing fire, right? Something Lumine. like that. Welcome to the Genshin Impact version 4.6. Ignis Purgatorius or something. Welcome, everyone. Yay. 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 Who's saying why here? True. <laughs> okay, so I'm Think sure about the pursuit quest the where the dog said that Caterpillar was not supposed to be orphanage. there. But just oh, yeah. In case you any convincing, that was like after everything was said and done and you go back into the book. With us today. Hey, everyone. My name is Erin Avet. I'm the voice of Arlequino, the father of the House of the Hearth. You might also I'll have to take another look at that quest. The knave. I'm so thrilled. Wait, to Onion is alive. I am program. alive. Yeah. Hi, folks. I miss I'm you. Mills, the voice of Linny, and he's also a member of the House of the Hearth. Yes, he is. Sino Muto yeah. birth is Sepho Kaiba. he's not a member of the House Oh my of gosh. Heart, we've also brought That would be hilarious if they did that as an here, intentional the one and only voice of Arataki Ito. <laughs> what up? It's me, Max Middleman. Hey everybody, what's going on? Yeah, like oh, my guy, the trailer, my it's dude. hard to to divine anything from the trailer cuz it just mixes and matches shit. So, who knows? Who knows what's going on? cannot be rescinded. Do you have any idea what you're doing? You're transfixed. Everlasting as the moon. Everlasting as the moon, even though the moons were supposedly supposed to die. Be rescinded. Do you have any idea what you're doing? You're hiding the very person Father has been trying to find. I really didn't mean to drag anyone else into this. If Father finds out about this, everyone involved is going to be punished. A traitor. Sino was chosen, but he was not the only one. You'd like me to return my power? I'm really looking forward mm. to this right. 
This is going to be a really good patch, y'all. Like, super good. I can't wait. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. The things we are going to learn. <laughs> but it just, it makes me even more excited for 4.7. Because I really think okay, okay. they are laying on the Ermin stuff and Conria stuff thick and heavy. And we are about to, like, learn a whole bunch of shit in 4.7 or 4.8 whichever one oh Mensliff mentioned it in her little theory wait what little theory did she recently post one Danesliff in 4.7 surely I, I mean he has to be coming because we're literally at the end of Fontaine. If we go by previous, um, region releases, because Sumeru ended in three point seven or something, didn't it? Three point seven, three point eight, something like that. It didn't go all the way to four point oh, like organically. And Remuria was kind of like the last little thing that we needed. From Fontaine before we can move on. Well, technically the Conria stuff is the last thing we need because we always need Conria lore in the region from Danesliff specifically. So yeah, we're we're done with this region, Jesus. 3.8 was the last patch of Sumeru. 3.8 was the summer of Yeah, that's what I thought. 3.8. Okay. After this slow, empty patch, I'm super excited to get into big lore and story-driven updates. Right, because, like, y'all, this, this patch was very dry. The alchemy stuff was if, somewhat interesting, I guess. But it was, ooh, it was hard. There was nothing going on. Not a thing. I keep forgetting about Chlorand and Siegeween. I I genuinely keep forgetting about them. Yeah, they should be in 4.7 or 4.8. Yeah, it was like, it was cute, but it was over really quick. But, you know, dry patches are nice sometimes to help people catch up. Um, maybe have a break from the game for a little while. So they're not all bad. Oh, this patch being dry, ga see, gave you a chance to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So that's nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We should be getting 4.7 drip marketing soon, maybe. Oh, that would be nice. We should, shouldn't we? Like, in a couple days. Right? Because, like, it usually releases, what is it, the day before the patch goes live? The day after? Which one is it, y'all? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, we were talking about Alice in the Wonderland references earlier when there's literally a character named Alice in the game. Oh, yeah. Alice herself, please, mom, but, you know. Fontaine, in general, just has, like, a ton of Alice in Wonderland references, but I guess so does the entire game in general, so... Monday is drip marketing. Yeah. So we got a couple days. I really want Dane and Kaya meeting again and getting more than just a few lines between them. Yeah, that would be nice. But they're really like... They're being very... Hoyoverse is being very secretive on Kaya's role and everything. They're just kind of like... Letting him take a back seat for now. But it's clear that he's going to be a super important character at some point. And I feel like he's going to blow our fucking minds eventually. I miss Dane too. Oh, you use this patch to also play Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> Yeah, like, this patch was just boring as fuck. But sometimes you need that, right? Yep, 
Yeah, I'm stuck on Shinyan not being here. That is a missed opportunity. And I know some people are tired of seeing Ito. Because <laughs> they always use him. They've been using him for events for a while. But I like him. She's so freaking cool, and I love the whole quest and everything secret that I can't talk about right now. <laughs> but I am also really excited for that and Linny's involvement in said things, mm. and that's all I'm gonna say. Then I've had. Hey, I just have to say. Oh, this patch is gonna be good. Yeah, the notion yin is kind of weird now that people mention it. I did not miss reading the book of Pear and Harry, though. Right. No, everybody tuned in for Pear and Harry. See, that's the thing. They'll like, and the same thing with the cat event. They'll like throw in s important things at the most random times and in the most random of places. So it's like they're telling you, aha, make sure you pay attention because you could miss something. You never know what's going to be important. Use this patch to 100% Fontaine map, and then they announce the treasure chest map update. Ooh. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. Please give me five star Kaya, please. Give me six star Kaya. Give me, oh my gosh. Give me Dane. Give me every Conrian. Like every single one. Even Clotar, I don't care. I like how Ramuria's windows there have the classic star shape on them. It's like a good. classic star shape. All right, let's look for a second. Where you at? Where you at? Fuck. Fuck. Go check out the form you all. We've all uh, blah 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 stuff about father stuff about Sino. There we go. Uh. Might be useful for solving puzzles during your adventure. The Conrian oh, star? Yeah. Meanwhile, a forgotten star. I didn't pay attention to the Fremenae Penguin, Penguin event, and now I find out it was. Oh, it was, it was very important. You guys, let me ask you this: What did this? What? What preceded the Penguin event? What information did we get right before the Penguin event? It's quiz time. What major lore drop did we get right before the penguin event? Lore of the house? No. That's not the answer I'm looking for. Paladin and glory of a great Oh yeah, I see what you mean by the star shape, yeah. That's interesting. Anyone going once? Does anybody have the correct answer? Farina? No. Your memory is terrible, so I don't know. Well, what happened in the patch before that? It was the it was the Archon Quest finale. Right? So what did we get? What major piece of information did we get? Not the dragon stuff. Paimon being a god? No. Gnosis info. Descender lore. Yes, we had just gotten information about the deceased third descender. Then we immediately get after that a story about a boy who drowned himself. And his mother reimagined her son as a prince who descended into a kingdom full of water imps that like to sing. 
and was going to be crowned as king, but then his crown was stolen. Hmm. This makes you wonder. Also, Felxy is based on Pear's design, and Pear is literally a term for green, green blue eyes. You want to know who has green blue eyes? In the game, Venti. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, we're going to talk about all of that later. That event was very important. It's safe to assume all events, big or small, are important as far as world lore goes. Yeah, because they, they, like they like to foreshadow a lot. Like, heavily. Like, a lot. And Venti's eyes remind the Traveler of home. Yes, they do. Also, you know Pear the Penguin? Pear the Penguin is a story about a bird who wanted to fly. Who, who literally has an animated, an entirely animated scene of teaching birds how to fly? Venti. Just saying, just something to think about. But anyway. Also, we were collecting pieces, kind of like we were collecting pieces um, for Abraxas in Enkonomiya. We were collecting pieces in the penguin event for the penguin. Almost like they are body parts. Like Abraxas, we had to collect his body parts his clothes, his bones, and then his crown. Isn't that interesting? What did Fischl say in the cat event? She said something important, but I can't remember. She did say something really weird. But I can't remember. Yeah, like a gnosis, huh? Like the gnosis are made of body parts of a descender. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, that's the event we got like right after the third descender is dead and we made him or her into the gnosis. Yeah, that's, that's the event that we got. So I found that to be very interesting. Also, one more thing. You know, the thing... About the mom, she wanted to sing to her dead son, and she sang him that tune. You want to know where we've also seen little boys singing to either a mother-like figure or a bird? We saw it in Enkonomiya, and we saw it on Surumi Island, and both of those boys were killed, were they not? It's the same story over and over again. It just makes you wonder. They really edged us with that Gnosis lore, basically. I thought you meant that event about Springvale in 4.1. Oh, no. Did they explain why Fremenet's helmet can see these things? Not really, no. I don't think they ever did. But I just went with it because I was like, oh, okay. One day we will get Venti's second story quest. It's interesting. We, we will, hopefully. Fischl's cat lines had a lot, like talking about suppressing elemental energy, Oz looking at memories, a Buddhist reference to 3K worlds, Jesus. Yeah, like there there was she she said a lot of sus things per usual. You know what, Ruse? I meant to ask you. Do you think that Mr. Nine is Oz? The only reason I say this is because From Fischl's event, Oz is like the secretary official and he's responsible for 
basically cataloging all officials travels and travails and everything and i was like well that's what mr nine is doing so does that mean he's like oz did they explain why no wait i already read that i think the people of Arrhenius can read minds and they you mean the melazines they also hinted at about chung yun's young energy might also be a blessing from someone or something interesting. Hmm, maybe. I've had about 30 different ideas this, about who he is, and I'm always still confused, lol. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, like, when I mean, like, Oz, I mean, like, who the character Oz is supposed to represent, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like Mr. Nine is obviously probably from Conria or someone adjacent to Conria. But who knows? He's sus. Yeah, when we help those guys, he says we can read their intentions. Wait, who? Wait, what? Who, what? Who, what? It awaits a warrior who would dare challenge the majesty of the ancient ruler. Oh, yeah, that's right. The statue of marble. I really can't wait for Remuria. Holy crap. It's going to be so good. This patch is going to be so good. The vigilantes we help? Wait, who? From where? Wait, what? I'm lost. Oh, it's from one of the world quests. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean those dudes that were named after, like, either fruit or flowers? Like the wolf hook dude and the tricky bully fruit, whatever? And they had that organization. Them? Am I thinking correctly? Y'all remember that one? The one where he had like a sister named Blanche? That quest was really suspicious too. Nope, he's talking about one where there's a dog and a man in a cage. Oh. Oh, that animal thing where we're literally talking to fucking animals. I remember. No, I. Okay, I remember that. I do remember that. It's been so long. No, I do recall that. Fontaine is weird all around like a like the talking dog, cat and fish. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on one second. What is this? Okay, y'all. I think this is a good stopping point. We talked about Arlequino. We talked about a lot of things. <laughs> but now, it's time to say goodbye. We shall meet again. At some point. I don't know when, though. Some point during this patch. Probably have another stream. And a video about Conria, which will be fun. And penguins and wolves and a whole bunch of other stuff.
But until then, enjoy patch 4.6 because it's going to be big. I hope you're all paying attention to the Conria stuff. Just pay attention to it. And I will see you all later. It was nice to see y'all. Oh, yes, and may you all win your 50-50s. Make sure you win them. Um...